Only a 12th level intellect has the slightest hope of surviving what you are about to experience. Our opening gag. <laughs> Unless you had something you were about to say. Um, no, we could do an opening gag. So, uh, huh, opening gag, opening gag. <laughs> Is that good? <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, I remember trying to think like, did anyone in the Avengers movie like get their mouth Gag, like full yeah. of like, did someone like get grabbed? Well, like when they all jump on Thanos, they all like kind of rustle around his head and try to yeah g- gag him. He doesn't get like choked at all, really. He no. he grabs Spider Man by the neck. Yeah, Spider Man's our opening slams gag. Him on the ground. Spider Man. There we go. That's our opening gag. Hey, welcome. <laughs> it's the best one yet. Uh, this is the 12th Level Intellects Podcast, hosted by the Watchtower Database. This is episode what, like a billion? I think it's 16. Um, I should know this. Um, it, whatever it is, we've been doing this for a wee bit now. Um, I hope you're enjoying listening to these. This is 16, yeah, yeah. Um, sweet 16. <laughs> um, we're in a little bit here. We're going to be talking with uh, Vanishing Point Maddie Washburn about Avengers: Infinity War and a couple other things. Um, before we get to that, we'll do some real quick news items because there's a lot to talk about with Infinity War. And again, we'll say this in a few seconds, but uh, with with Maddie again. But don't listen to this. <laughs> don't listen to the Ven- Infinity War part unless you've seen the movie. Exactly. Big it is spoilers. Very much worth seeing. Yeah, yeah, you want to go into it without it being ruined for you if you can. Yeah, we're not going to do like a non-spoiler and then spoiler. We just mm-hmm. talk about it. So, um, all right. My first thing, uh, just a little interesting tidbit of information. I guess we got from uh, Jay. Oliva, I think is probably how you pronounce it, or Oliva, something like that. He's the director of a bunch of the um, direct-to-video um, DC cartoon movies, Bad Blood, Batman vs. Robin, Justice League Dark. Um, he recently uh, tweeted uh, when someone was asking him about, like, oh, you know, 10 years of Marvel movies, uh, but, you know, we have um, five years of DCEU movies and still no Man of, Se- Man of Steel sequel. And then he said something along the lines of how, uh, well, I have it right here, actually. Man of Steel was never meant to have a sequel because it was supposed to be chapter one of a five-chapter story. Notice mm-hmm. how BVS mm-hmm. follows exactly after Man of Steel. It's like book two of Harry Potter. That makes total sense because that's sort of how I've always viewed it. I've, I've right. never understood when people say, like, oh, I want Man of Steel 2 like you basically got it. It's where he fights Batman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so wait, who who said that on Twitter? Jay Oliva or okay. Oliva. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, Henry Cavill actually had like a kind of <coughs> piece of news that goes with that. He wants to do yeah. a Man of Steel two. While he's been talking about uh, Mission Impossible six, he was asked about Superman, and yeah. he did say that his contract only allows for one more movie, and that's mm. probably going to be Justice League two. Um, but he, it's likely he may appear in Shazam in the guest appearance. Right. So that's what the rumors mm-hmm. are suggesting. And it seems like DC executives want to use Henry Cavill's Superman as the glue between the movies. Um, yeah. I personally think Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman would be a better choice for that. Yeah. But, but it does seem like Henry Cavill wants to do a Man of Steel 2. He wants to continue being Superman. He just has to renegotiate his contract. And I think that the powers that be are going to want him to do that. So I, I would not be surprised to see an official Man of Steel 2 down the line. And it makes sense to have Superman in the Shazam movie because they're, they've always been kind of yeah. like, you know, Shazam is sort of based off Superman and they're kind of buddies and whatever. They've had a, a relationship. The, of some there kind. was a great animated uh, m- movie that was Superman, Shazam, The Return of Black Adam. That That is one I have not seen. You haven't, really. Okay. It has no. George mm-hmm. Newbern as Superman. It's almost like a, oh, a okay. lost episode of a superman anime series in a way because mm. it's uh shazam's origin story and it's also okay. black adam's origin so for me at least especially with the dc because it's um uh, the same guy who did captain marvel and jlu as well um, oh okay and i, That's I forget cool. his name so it's like the two of them together from jlu reunited so it does very much feel like a lost episode i think i think that's some actor, Jerry that, o- like, a, like a screen actor. I want to say Jerry O'Connell or something. Really That's like what that. I thought, but I think Jerry O'Connell is Sounds Superman like in the newer New 52. 
I am. movies. Maybe he's both, though. That would be interesting that we haven't made that connection, but it's probably not true. Yeah, I, let's <laughs> see. Go into Google. Who gets to? Who gets to? It, it is. First. No, it's, I got it. Yeah, it is Jerry O'Connell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really weird. I wonder why they did that. I mean, I guess that's cool. Mm-hmm. Well, um, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's a good movie. Look it up. Um, it's a great um, yeah. precursor, like um, crash course into Shazam and the character. But so yeah, so the the Man of Steel two thing, he says it's chapter one, <clears throat> chapter one of a five chapter story, um, and I wonder if Suicide Squad is included in that. No. Probably not. No. Um, in which case, it would probably just be Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman, Justice League, and then originally Justice there was League Justice two. League Part two. And there still is. But th- it's, yeah, it's but then what would what would be you know we don't know what the fifth one is maybe a Man of Steel two kind of. Mm-hmm thing like in not in name but in spirit or whatever sure. um so well no, anyway that was kind of a little cool yeah. thing yeah more dcu news aquaman footage premiered at cinemacon recently right, yeah. and it was really well recepted um they showed a couple of shots of atlantis which apparently looks like the city from coco pixar's coco i haven't seen mm. coco so i don't really know yeah i don't know like <laughs> it's supposed to be like this uh city with like lights and it's like in this blue sort of atmosphere thing like it mm. for me it re- would probably remind me of like the gungan city from star wars episode one yeah. you know yeah, like yeah. Uh, that that whole thing yeah they're gonna have to try really hard to not do that <laughs> <laughs> i i would not be surprised to see a gungan have they like, have like, the guy that played jar jar Binks be like a right a military general or something and yeah. apparently there was a shot that showed jason momoa's <laughs> aquaman fighting patrick wilson's orm and a really oh, yeah, similar yeah. sort of scene from black panther where they have to fight for the rights of the kingdom in a way so, I hope that uh, he does a good job as Orm because I really can't stand that guy, the actor. Oh, really? I really don't like him. I don't. I think it's because he's in every like terrible horror movie. Uh, uh, he's in well, like he was the Night Owl and Watchmen. Oh, you're right. You're right. I guess he's fine in that. But he, I'm talking about like. Um, what is it? Uh, it's whatever the one where there's the like Darth Maul demon uh, that like. There's like a famous screenshot from it where he's like creeping around the side of the guy. Ah, what the hell? What is his? What's the guy's name again? Patrick something. Patrick Wilson. Um, he is in, uh, Insidious. Oh, okay, uh, and, sure. But he's also in like The Conjuring or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah and he's just in like all of those. And that's so it's the same director, James Wan. He directed all those movies, and he's directing Aquaman. Oh, interesting. He's also the voice of the president on the phone in Batman vs. Superman. <laughs> Maybe President Worm. <laughs> there you um, go. Um, yeah, I, no, I'm looking forward to I that. Think he and Aquaman are going to have a similar relationship to Thor and Loki. Like, it's going to yeah. be... I, well, it's probably going to stay antagonistic. I doubt that they become friendly. <laughs> he is my brother. Yeah, Orm is always bad. Half-brother. Half <laughs> so there was footage of Black Manta in it. Um who I forget, I forget who's playing mm-hmm. him. But we have uh, Willem Dafoe as Volko, Amber Heard as Mira. Yeah. They're all, they were all, both of them were in the Justice League movie, but they got cut out. Well, actually, no, Amber Heard. was still in it, yeah, yeah. But Volko got cut, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's cool. So that apparently was, looked really good, and that's really good news to hear. Yeah, I'm happy to hear that. I think that uh, uh, if they, well, this was, this was, this isn't funny, and it was funnier five minutes ago when we were talking about the Gungans, but uh, (laughs) it's just to have uh, Aquaman, like, have there be like a because he's he's not i don't think he's technically the king right now i think he's like uh yeah he's still in his like early aquaman mode if i don't want to do this he's wandering whatever. around still figuring out his yeah. heritage because it seemed in justice league like Am- like amber heard zamira basically told him hey you're part yeah. of the, like you gotta do this yeah you're part of a bigger world aquaman <laughs> you just told me <laughs> uh yeah and then she has an eye patch in the next movie but uh <laughs> he he should walk up to the current king and then the king can go like, <laughs> the gun gun. like anyway that, that was the joke uh-huh. um <laughs> well, and then they play uh at the end of the movie stop it anyway down. next thing uh <laughs> i have the only other thing I had was just a little interesting, another interesting little tidbit of information. Um, so that, you know, we talked about the Suicide Squad Hell to Pay last time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Alan Burnett, we noticed, was the screenwriter for that. Yeah. Um, and we talked about how that was interesting that he must have written it a while ago because he's retired and stuff. And uh, so this article from Sci-Fi uh, was talking about 
uh, how he wrote it. Yeah, he did write it quite a while ago, and that he wrote it a lot more R-rated than it wound up being. Oh, wow. Um, and they had to keep, like, cutting things out of it. And uh, so this quote from him I thought was funny. Uh, you can usually tell who's going to die in these stories and who's going to get their head blown off, Burnett lamented. I wanted to write it in a way where you don't know. That was the challenge in writing this. I'm retired, and I thought it was time to retire some of these characters. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. This so, is pretty That is funny. funny. I actually I didn't funny realize guy. this recently, but Alan Burnett wrote the Super Friends episode The Fear. With the scarecrow, yeah, that told yeah, the, Batman's origin it like story. changed Super Friends forever. It did, or whatever. And, it changed Batman in cartoons, or and whatever. that got him the job on BTAS. So that was yeah, yeah, that was super cool. He's a great guy, and we have a, a great interview um, with him on mm-hmm. this channel. <laughs> Check it out. So yeah. um, I did also since we last uh, we mentioned last week, I gave a piece of news that said that DC was doing a phone poll to oh, see yeah. if Damian <laughs> Wayne... correct yourself. Yeah, yeah, I'm correcting myself. It's not true. They're not doing a phone <laughs> poll. Um, I misread the article. Um, and so the writer said that he wanted to do a phone poll. That would have been, <laughs> oh. been cool if they had been allowed to do that. But, but he still said, like, um, fans, make your voices heard to DC. Maybe they'll actually, like, make this permanent, whatever the decision may be. Um, but he's also said that it's a six issue series within the Deathstroke series, starts at Deathstroke number 30, and it's mm. technically out of continuity. At least that's what he's saying that it's set mm. out of continuity, and, except it's still very much like everyone's in their rebirth looking outfits. Why would they put such a, such a like, you know, the Damien thing is such a big thing in, in the, that universe right now. Why would they do, like, a mm-hmm. who's his real dad? But just kidding, this is just a Elseworlds right. thing. Right. Or... <laughs> well, it's, it's definitely a Deathstroke story. It's it's in the Deathstroke book. Um, so okay. it's definitely, like, he's the main character of this. It seemed like Christopher Priest, who's the writer on it, wants to do his own miniseries. But DC's like, eh, mm. we'll let you do it in the Deathstroke book. And he was like, okay, fine. So, <laughs> okay. I think that's what happened. Um, but I yeah. really want to kill Wonder Woman. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, do it in your own thing. Uh, do okay. it in the uh, random other book. Um, we don't kill our main characters ever. So. Yeah, I wanted to make that correction. <laughs> There's not a phone poll, but it's still... Okay. Yeah. Uh, one last piece <laughs> of news. A, is there a phone booth? Batman? Anyway, good to no, uh, no phone booth. That's Superman books. You're in the wrong, wrong right. book. Sorry, um, my bad. Batman Ninja is out on digital streaming. Haven't watched yes, it, it yet. Is. We'll probably neither have I. <laughs> maybe we'll talk about it next episode. But we'll. we'll uh... It has not gotten good reviews. <laughs> no, no, it hasn't. Um, so I have not seen a single positive thing about it, which is really unfortunate. It is. I guess, it's but... sad. Yeah, but we'll see. We'll have to watch for ourselves and yeah, and talk we'll about it soon. It. But it's out. You can you can watch it. Let us know what you think. Yeah. Cool. All right, we won't waste any more of your precious, precious time with this two-hour episode. We don't have the time it. stone to make it yeah. shorter. <laughs> so that's what a good transition, what a great Theodore segue. Thomas. Thank you. Uh, yeah, here's us talking with Maddie about some stuff. Uh, I guess you can always check the um, description of these episodes for uh, time codes for where to go mm-hmm. if you want to skip we're, things skip around or whatever we're but. about to talk about a question that um that we had on our community page on the youtube or was it a private yeah, message it's, it's, it was a facebook message but yeah i mean not i'm not saying to skip this it's still a good conversation <laughs> but i'm saying if you come into these episodes like oh they're going to talk about infinity war damn it they're talking about other things for like 45 minutes then just, just listen skip, to what you want to listen exactly. to man skip to good stuff but you could also just listen to the whole episode and we're and we're taking so much time to explain this just, so here you go here, here's this goodbye <laughs> 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 I'm glad that you put those in so I know where to do it. Yeah, you would be lost otherwise. Hey, we got a guy here. I don't know who he is, but hopefully uh, he has some sort of uh, positive input on the conversation. Um, you might have seen him sometimes on the channel if you watch any of our videos, which you probably don't because they're bad. Um, his name's Maddie. <laughs> I'm going to try that again. <laughs> You just said you don't know who I am, and then you said my name is Maddie. Where is where is your continuity within three sentences? Exactly. And and I don't know how you can see him on the channel if he's the vanishing all the time. Ah, uh, boy. Okay. Well, yeah, this, because is it's, we, it's the this is why we have Ted You here. see me on the channel because it's the vanishing point, not the vanished point. I am oh, you're still vanishing. Vanishing. Yes, you're not quite so your name yeah, is in, Shane. in front of your eyes. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, Vanish. I've... So <laughs> someone snapped their fingers and 
I'm starting to vanish. Oh. That's right. So before, You're, you have just enough time oh to hit God. hit your pager <laughs> right before you go. <laughs> Are we done? Are we done with this little bit here? Uh, <laughs> before we t- before we talk about the movie, uh, I wanted to uh, finally get to our guy Chris Hastings. Uh, he, he asked us forever ago to talk about something that I've been putting off for a while. Um, I'll just read his message. He says. Love the podcast, guys. Always listen to it at the gym or when I'm chilling at home. Oh, thank you, oh, that's Chris. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, the casual atmosphere of it is great. Well, today's not so much. Um, for a content suggestion, <laughs> would you guys ever consider doing a podcast about the differences between Terry as Batman and Bruce as Batman? Perhaps even discuss how Terry would have handled situations that Bruce dealt with during his career. Keep up the good work. So I, I, was actually, I have an I answer. I have that. an answer. Okay, okay. okay. The answer is yes. We will. We will do a podcast about that. Oh, wow. That's great. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> is it happening right now? I hope so. Uh, <laughs> I don't think... Uh, see, I uh, for some reason I remembered this question because I didn't read it, reread it until just now. I thought it was uh, how Terry would deal with situations Bruce had already handled. Like how... It would, or no, sorry. The opposite of that. I thought it was Bruce how Bruce would handle Terry situations, but this one that he actually asked makes more sense. Because I was all ready to talk about, like, oh, I think Bruce Wayne would probably have figured out where Spellbinder was, like, way quicker and all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, but, uh, I, think, I think there was, like, it's not the wrong answer to the question. We could still approach it that way, too. But let's definitely talk about their different styles and how they approach being Batman, what being Batman means to both of them. Well, for one, Terry McGinnis has a strength-enhancing flying costume, so there's probably a lot of situations. I think, I think we should start with Bruce Wayne because he was first. Let's... Okay. <laughs> um, I have no idea. He made um, Batman. He is Batman. Born yeah. born from his parents' murder, obviously. Um, Terry picked it up. He's the second, second Batman, so it's not a totally original idea <laughs> on his part. <laughs> He's the sequel. <laughs> Um, well, like, what are so specific I'm, Bruce I'm, situations? Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to wrap my head around the, um, I guess, the premise of the question. And to me, I'm thinking the way the way he worded it, he wants to know how Terry would deal with situations Bruce dealt with. And so I'm thinking about um, okay, what one in, one in specific that comes to mind for me. Oddly enough, and I was I was gonna start this off as a um, as a joke, but there was um, the Underdwellers, which is a joke within itself. Yes. Um, I mean, Bruce saves all those kids from the sewers and everything, but um, there's there's actually a real good I guess parallel comic to that um, in the the first uh, six issue run of Batman Beyond where. Terry's going to stop Blight from getting some radioactive element or something. And on the way, sneaking into the plant, he goes through like underground tunnels or whatever and finds all these kids that are living down there. And I feel I feel like it was supposed to be a parallel to Underdwellers. And Terry obviously doesn't have the resources that Bruce has in that he can't like be like, hey, come live in my mansion momentarily be my ward <laughs> it was that be my yeah. ward <laughs> yeah. oh so, look at all the robins <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole bird's and, nest and, and, and all and all these kids are all these kids are already convinced that like hey we need to stay here and take care of each other and they don't have um they don't have a weird pirate looking guy like <laughs> being a sewer, slave master to him or anything. King. So none of so them it's are a, like it's, a, the, it's, a, it's not a direct connection to Underdwellers where one of them is like the new sewer king who was a kid back then. <laughs> oh, that'd something. be great. <laughs> yeah. Coming, coming soon. Yeah, I mean I mean it's a Yeah. <laughs> it's it's all it's already a slightly better situation. But like so at the end of it, um I guess Terry just brings them all like a bunch of like gifts and food and stuff and like they're, they're all like, "Wow, Batman really cares about us. Let's yeah. <laughs> spread his legend." I got, I got another example. So um, in Batman Beyond, we see Mister Freeze return really early. It's um, cold, mm-hmm. yeah, cold storage, right? Oh. Meltdown. 
You dummy. Oh, where'd he go? What? How, what? <laughs> Ted, Ted, Ted's the real vanishing point here. What happened? <laughs> Shit, dude. Did he just get snapped? <laughs> I don't know. What, what was that? He says his laptop just shut down. One sec. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so let me just jump back into Mr. Freeze. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Start like you haven't said anything about it yet. <laughs> so so Batman Beyond, it's episode four, right? Cold storage is that what it's called? No. It's meltdown. No. Meltdown. Jesus. Well, I don't know why I thought it was cold storage. <laughs> anyway, meltdown. Yeah, that's the episode title. Because he's kept his freeze suit in cold storage. That's, that's a line from the that's episode. That's what it is. But, uh, um, so he was referring to, I've kept something I've kept in heart of ice. This is what he meant to say. Anyway, uh-huh. sorry. <laughs> um, well, Mr. Freeze comes back, and Terry is the one to like actually give him a little bit of leeway and trust. And he's like, maybe he's yeah. turned around. And the whole time, Bruce is like, no, you know, it's Mr. Freeze. Like he's gonna be evil right. forever. And like, there's a little bit of both. Um, both viewpoints are valid there but that's that's a really good example of where like ultimately mr freeze does kind of help yeah. save people in the end of the episode and he kind of does redeem himself a little bit and so terry i think is different in the aspect that he did give some trust where bruce is a little bit more withdrawn yeah i think a pretty basic comparison is that terry is just a lot more a lot less experienced uh so he just like maybe Bruce Wayne wouldn't have been easily like as easily captured by someone like Stalker or I don't know like because he just gets put in a hanging swinging cage but I guess it all just depends on the writer of the episode like they could you could easily put Bruce Wayne in any of those same situations especially right. like early early Batman the Animated Series when he's not as smart as maybe he could be <laughs> but, yeah I, I mean I mean, Bruce ha- has been captured by villains before, yeah. so... Right. <coughs> and, like, they both have... Here's, I mean, here's the, something. Uh, both of them have kind of dealt with Splicer people, too. Like, you know, Bruce has had, like, yeah. Man Bat and Killer Croc, and, like, Killer Croc's not really a Splicer, but you know what I'm saying. And then, like, but Terry, yeah. it's been a bit more ingrained in, like, social uh, <laughs> social norms, and, like, there's a whole culture around it. They're less, like, Bruce kind of had these monsters he'd fight occasionally, like Anthony Romulus's werewolf... And um, Tigris and Emil Dorian and that whole thing, yeah. uh, but I think I, I think Bruce has approached those sorts of villains more like monsters, whereas Terry, they're definitely people with animal abilities. I don't know if that's like a comparison that's valid, but makes sense in my head. Yeah, the um, <laughs> he Batman Bruce I Wayne Batman also gets yeah. he just gets bit by by Copperhead really easily. Oh like right, he just gets snuck up on. I guess, but that seems like something that would happen to Terry, not Bruce Wayne, I guess. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to sneak up on Bruce There's Wayne. Also, going back to your point about, I guess, Bruce being more withdrawn and Terry being more trusting, there's the whole, um, I guess, the issue on how they deal with romantic relationships mm-hmm. with the, the, I just step over them <laughs> line that Bruce gives us. That's like that's All so the evident. All the laying my feet in um in the JLU episode epilogue. That's like really the crux of that episode. Like keep epilogue a secret <laughs> hashtag. Yeah, but like at the end of it, Amanda Waller tells Terry, "Is like if you want to be different than your old man, like let people into your life." You know, that's like kind yeah. of her whole like that's she pinpoints that as the major difference between the two and there's all the stuff about him yelling at bruce about like you know why all these people left you is because you're an asshole (laughs) (laughs) right and like terry terry isn't as much of an asshole i guess like he he doesn't necessarily put himself in front of everything else which bruce wayne usually did Um, you mean like in a micromanaging sort of way yeah yeah yeah. like like it's more important that that bruce wayne gets out of harm's way before anyone else except for maybe in the case of a robin mm-hmm. um uh, I, which made me think of uh in riddler's reform when batman like you think he's dead or whatever but then they're like how'd you how did you not explode and he's like well i jumped in the safe terry probably would have just died yeah <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't have thought of that ahead of time <clears throat> Or Terry would have gone, well, I just flew out of the building because I can fly. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> That's true, too. Uh, yeah, Terry's got a lot of, like, um, I, I guess his suit's got leeway. Like, it's so super-powered that he 
can definitely kind of bumble through a bunch of situations that Bruce might have had to handle more delicately, you know? Yeah. It's a bit of a handicap. Oh, definitely. And yeah. and then, I guess, when there's a situation his suit's not prepared for, they just upgrade it for that right. the next episode. <laughs> like, how, like, how, like how Terry was, uh, the suit was taken over and lost soul, and he didn't have a way to breathe underwater mm-hmm. when he was being thrown into the ocean and then all of a sudden a couple episodes later he's got that rebreather thing yeah right which changes like four times or something <laughs> <laughs> i guess another big difference is bruce has alfred um to help him and like bruce kind of acts as a bit of a yeah. an alfred sort of role to terry except that like bruce has had all these years of experience as batman so he's much more effective helping out from the cave and like being on the computer and in that sort of way whereas alfred like did that sometimes like he was kind of there uh, in the bat cave in that sort of administrative capacity but he was also like i think i could see alfred <laughs> i don't know alfred cooks i don't think I, bruce I, cooks I, I, does bruce cook i'd really well by epilogue he does he made oh him yeah soup, he made him cold. soup but it's cold uh, he doesn't but, cook <laughs> i was just thinking that that i re- now i really want to see like normal era batman beyond bruce wayne uh, like old bruce wayne i want to see him trying to fly the batmobile and just going whoa <laughs> like Alfred. see i got i got the opposite train of thought from that i now want a a teenage bruce wayne batman with alfred being the man at the computer <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which i mean kind of happened um i mean i don't know not really like mask of the phantasm <laughs> yeah sort of Really yeah, have it redo that scene. Uh, have Terry put the bad suit. Uh, I mean, I guess it doesn't make sense. Oh, God. Wise, but ha- have him put the bad suit on for the first time and turn around and then squint his eyes. But then Bruce Wayne goes like, "You look, you look stupid." <laughs> <laughs> like you look. It, I look it better. Fit me better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, there's not. Yeah, I don't know. We probably shouldn't linger too long on this. But thank you, Chris, for your your input. We always appreciate it. Yeah. Um, do you want to you want to talk about the like Avengers movie or we something? Sh- we no? should, yeah. Did we did we mention <laughs> though? I, I think like it definitely needs to be mentioned the Return of the Joker scene where Terry's just like, oh yeah, the old man didn't talk. Like I like to talk. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. a major difference between the two of them. Uh, we definitely need to say that before we go. Cool, it's said. Yeah, we said it. Okay, all right. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> did it. All right. Now, I think that was just you that needed to say. I need to say it. That's an important. <laughs> it was for for me going to that question. It was definitely like he talks and he has a love yeah. life. Those are the two major differences. <laughs> he he attack. He protect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's so let's avenge. Mad, Maddie, go because you're passionate as hell about this. Movie. Give, give us an <laughs> intro. What what are we talking about? What is this? Oh god! I mean, um, well, we're <laughs> talking about this? Infinity War. <laughs> they know that already. <laughs> no, <laughs> what is this? Thumbnail. What is it? What's next? What is this What's movie? Infinity War? Know. <laughs> god, uh, where can I get one? Ah, uh, y'all are putting this all on me. That's all right. Why, I'll why take can the wheel. Why can I get one? I'll take the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. It's yeah. a reference to it's the movie. To the movie, yeah. <laughs> Probably one of the better Wait, jokes I, in the movie. You guys, you guys are both like <laughs> cutting in and out, and I'm trying to understand what's going on. Oh, the internet. Ted said, "Why is the movie or something like that?" It was, it was a reference. What is the movie? Where, where's the movie? Oh, okay. Why is? The- I thought, I thought, I halfway <laughs> thought I heard that, but then I thought when you said, "Oh, uh, that's a reference," that you were talking about me taking the wheel, and I was like, of the spaceship. No, we're one step to ahead of Titan? the game. I don't know that. I want to talk yeah, about that in um, a minute, though, about <laughs> taking the wheel. We'll we'll get there. Yeah. So yes. we are talking about Infinity War, the culmination of ten years of movies. This is the nineteenth Marvel movie, the third Avengers movie, the seventeenth Iron Man movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the the fourth. No, the third uh, Russo Brothers directed yeah. movie, which is surprising, I guess, that they were given, not surprising, surprising, like, I'm glad that they were given this instead of, like, uh, Joss Whedon again. Um, is it? But is I, it their third movie? I know I know they did Civil War. What? Which other one did they do? Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. God, it's. It feels like it's been forever <laughs> since then. <laughs> They, they directed uh, Spider Man, the original no. Tobey Maguire Spider Man. No, I'm they just didn't. Kidding. Yeah, um, it was Sam Raimi. I was like, wait, what? It was what uh, alternate geez. reality did I get oh, pulled yeah. into? The reality where <laughs> anyway. you get called off the call and then you come back. And, okay. Uh, I know, anyway, I don't know. I don't know how soon we want to get into spoilers territory. So I'm gonna. I think let one of you. Guys I think we should take the wheel. I think we should get into spoiler territory. I yeah, think we're, that should we're, go without saying. This is what saying. this podcast is. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're going into this now, be warned. We're spoiling. Watch the movie. Watch for the God's movie. Sake. I D- I spent back. so much time. Yeah. yeah, so much effort trying to not watch any of the trailers or anything. Well, I watched the first trailer and then I purposely kept myself from watching anything because i really mm-hmm. didn't want to know anything so don't do that to yourself definitely come back see, after you see, see the movie yeah yeah um yeah so we start the opening scene dealt with the ramifications of thor ragnarok right it's yeah. it basically it's like <laughs> seconds later um <laughs> so it's a uh, um uh what is, uh what's the name of the place asgard it was like asgard isn't a place oh it's not a place not anymore it's a people but now it's not a people either because they're mm-hmm. all dead. <laughs> they're not all dead. Thor specifically <laughs> says that only half of them were killed. Oh, so, okay. But now after... So, Mr. I after, saw the movie twice. After the end of the movie, though, would that mean only a quarter of them are left? I guess we'll see. <laughs> I, don't I was know, a little surprised, I actually. <laughs> um, not to skip right to the end or yeah, anything, I know. but I was a little, but yeah, just not do that yet. Okay, my bad, my bad. <laughs> Start at the beginning. <laughs> uh, well, I there's a big purple space guy, <laughs> right? And then there's a big green space guy, the Hulk. Who you're right? Who fi- he so this is something I thought Currently was really funny was that the Hulk like they usually save that reveal for the third act and they even make a joke about that in the movie, but in this yeah. we see the Hulk right at the beginning and it's I love that he's working with Loki. Because that was such a, a nice, like, character arc moment for the yeah, two of them. we have a Hulk. You're right, yeah. we have a Hulk. And it's, like, <laughs> from the first Avengers where Hulk just, like, thrashes Loki around. And now they're, like, right. allies. They're friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In a way. So that was, yeah, that was fun enough, for me. Enough, anyway. So what got me about, I guess, that, that first scene... And it didn't, it didn't click until going, uh, going back the second time... When Loki is talking to Thanos and talking about um, pledging his undying fidelity to him, he starts the conversation um, addressing Thanos. But so but, so uh, so he no, so, he changes his uh, conversation to Thor, right? That's where you're going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because mm-hmm. because he if, if you're if you're not looking that deep into it, he just says he he's like I Loki. And then changes his tone and says, "Son of Odin." Mm-hmm. And, right, and, and he looks at him. Yeah, yeah. He's already he's already established that he's not the son of Odin in this movie, and right, so right. the wording is obvious that he's talking to Thor. And I was I didn't catch that the first time, and then going back to it, I was just like, "Oh, geez, this is this yeah. is heavy." Mm-hmm. There's a lot more subtle and well written than say he. He turns his lightsaber toward his enemy and turns it on, <laughs> or whatever that Snoke does when he just says like the exact things that are happening. This is the same like reveal. You know what I'm talking uh-huh. about? It's the same kind of sentence. I have no of, clue like, what you're talking, talking about. I don't. You. I don't watch. Oh Star my Wars. god! What? It was that from the Last <laughs> Jedi? Was it the name of that movie? Yeah. It sure oh, okay. was. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> it's the same kind of thing, but it was better. Well, more well written um, well so but yeah they use the hulk at the beginning of infinity war and then he's gone for the rest of the movie and yeah. honestly banner's dialogue was, sucked a lot too he was not <laughs> he was not written very well in this movie that was like, <coughs> one of my only gripes and like his reunion with uh black widow was so awkward they just like kind of stare at each other for a second and he's like yeah. nat yeah. hey it's been a while and that's like it so maybe yeah, I think I'm yeah. assuming they'll probably have a better like reunion, reunion yeah, in the next like movie, a kiss or something, yeah, I, or or a breakup. I felt right. uh, yeah both times I felt like that uh that 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 scene with the reunion was cut short because 
Falcon goes, oh, this is awkward. And in right. my head, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, wait, so they've, Team Captain America's all been sleeping in hotel rooms together for the past how <laughs> yeah. many years since Civil, two years since Civil War. Like, are right. Falcon and Nat a thing now? And then they never, they never uh, touch that. Oh, wow. Or at least someone, yeah, maybe. I didn't think about that, but that's possible. I guess so. Um, huh. I, um, I'm trying to make sure I, I scroll back to what I was talking about. Talking about, talking about the time. Captain America team, they mentioned Hawkeye and Ant Man being unavailable or not wanting to like leave their families or mm-hmm. whatever. And I wonder if that might also be because Ant Man is missing. Like maybe the events of Ant Man and Wasp are going to happen concurrently with this movie. So maybe they're like mm. in the microverse or something. So maybe they're like doing that whole thing and finding Michelle Pfeiffer's Wasp right, and bringing yeah, her yeah. back, Janet. You know, um, so maybe, yeah, maybe they're stuck there during the whole movie. And then they come back after that and see, like, oh, shit, Infinity War happened. But that's just my theory. You know, you know, yeah. be, you know, it'd be funny is if it, like, does happen one for one during Infinity War and they come back and immediately the new Wasp just... Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, pro- oh, that would possible. be awkward. Like, would... like a post credits or something. Yeah. yeah. That'd be like, well, what was this movie for? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why did we even do this? Yeah. That was something that uh, I went in having forgotten or not knowing. Or I don't know that there was going to be like two, that this was like a two part thing. Um, and I think I I guess that's a good thing for my initial viewing of it. No, like not remembering that because by the end it was a lot more like, oh what? Like it had it had the right effect on me because mm-hmm. I was like, oh this is the end. It stopped, and you could tell most of the people in the theater had that same kind of gut reaction to that. Um, but I kind of wish I had, and that, therefore I guess that is a good and also a good thing that I didn't know remember because. Uh, otherwise I would have been spending the whole movie going, okay, I know, like, we're not going to go, we're not going to get anywhere good in this one. Like it's going to, you know, I would just expect it to end on a weird place, but I kind of mm-hmm. wish I would have known that it was going to be two parts for stuff like, like the fact that, you know, we never get like a, like the, there's, there's still two groups of Avenger people by the end of the movie. They're not right. to, fully together. The people yet. in space and the people uh, on earth. And in space, yeah. that's what, like right. Iron Man, um, Star Lord and Spider-Man. Guardians, yeah. yeah. Most of the Guardians. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then, and but, but Rocket Strange, and yeah. Groot make it to earth by yeah. the end of the movie. But so yeah. I just, I'm, I'm, there wasn't that, but I'm sure there will be in the next one where you just have this giant, you know, copy every superhero ever paste them in front of thanos and then they punch him a bunch and he dies or whatever <laughs> i i don't think it's yeah. gonna be that easy i i know it won't it was very unexpected most of the stuff that happened in this movie i actually listened to our podcast where we talked about the trailer last night mm. as i was falling cool. into Sleepland, and there was a lot of the things that we like we didn't really predict anything but i had like some initial complaints that wound up not being actual complaints like my biggest thing was i called it avengers 3 the third same avengers movie because the trailer looked like it was just going to be another all attack. The, all the yeah. Avengers ber- versus a bunch of like faceless drone minions. Yeah. Because that's what you see on like the Wakanda battlefield. But that's only like, you know, a, a small segment of it. And even that has a lot more interesting things happening yeah. than just punching so robots or punching Chitauri me, or whatever. Let me bring up like, what do you think of the children of Thanos? Like these new characters who were introduced as like Thanos' like top lieutenants. Like it reminded me a lot of the fourth world. How like if Thanos is yeah. our dark side, now we've got like our Steppenwolf and our Calabac and people yeah. like that. I think uh, that one of the... <sighs> this i guess is a good reason to have multiple people on here for this conversation because i'm sure there's going to be things that i didn't like that you guys didn't have a problem with but i think that my biggest problem and you've already on facebook told me that you disagree with this ted but uh is that thanos and i guess more specifically his his children his his minion people his squidwards um (laughs) are not set up as much as I would have liked them to be, I guess. Um, I think because, well, their, their characters, the, the, the children or whatever is, Mm -hmm. is 
very just sudden, like you know, the start of the movie. You're seeing these people for the first time, and I guess that's okay. We're seeing this um, group, like we saw Ronan. We met Ronan in the first Guardians movie, and he's on their level. He would have been there yeah, with the yeah. rest of them if he hadn't died. And that, uh, and I guess Loki kind of counted as that for a while. For a second, um, and uh, but. Uh, that's okay, I guess, because throughout the movie, you don't really need to have know anything about them other than that they are loyal to Thanos and they're going to take separate sections of the planet or whatever. Um, but Thanos himself is... Uh, should we get into this now? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, okay. I, I, <laughs> okay, pretend you're not a person that knows thing, anything at all about comic books. And you just go see. Well, I know that's hard for you, Ted. But um, is that is that is that possible in this day? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. Uh, you're my my mom. My I mom know. knows who Groot is, James. Yeah, okay, I don't okay. think that's a possible frame of mind nowadays. <laughs> well, so I guess I can compare this to the obvious comparison being Dark Side. Is a lot of people, even if they're not. Um, comic booky people just because dc is kind of more mainstream know who dark side is probably sooner maybe not now maybe not after this movie <laughs> but by comparison perhaps 10 years ago people would have known who dark side was sooner than they would have known who thanos was um if you're just an average person sure and i think that because of that if you had introduced dark side in the same way to a movie universe where you see little glimpses of him and then he's suddenly like the big bad guy that that would be okay you, because you mean how people, they did it in the dcau it, yeah kind of uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but so i think that people would know as soon as he turns around at the end of you know, a post credits of a Justice League movie or something is if we do the same thing of Thanos, we Dark Side's face turns to the camera and smiles. Everyone goes, "Oh my God, it's Dark Side! No way!" Uh -huh. Ah, and then when he shows up, it's natural because you know it's been coming. And oh, right. I love Dark Side. Everybody knows who Dark Side is. It's going to be great. But like with Thanos, maybe I'm making the wrong maybe I'm making the wrong judgment. But I feel like when it, when I saw the first Avengers movie, he turns around. I have no idea who that is. And that I that might just be me, but I had to look it up. I have to research who this is. Oh, this was a big deal in the comics. This was a, a guy that killed a, a lot of people and all this stuff. Like, okay, he's a big deal. And then then when I go see this movie, I I'm so prepared, knowing not prepared, prepared. Like I haven't looked up, you know, what he's gonna do or whatever. But I know what to expect from his character, sort of. And so then then I have an okay idea. I can go in and and watch the movie but if i haven't researched who thanos is oh there was a weird purple guy in this movie i think they talked about him in guardians uh he, like thanny like thanny something like that i can't remember and then he just shows up and he's like oh he's the bad guy now i don't what's going on <laughs> so i don't know maybe this well, is unfair but it, it, it's just i think me. so because the, the first avengers movie is also his attack and that's like was a major event in the marvel universe and that they can't yeah. forget about so We'll let Matty. Yeah, but so, they don't name him in that movie. I don't know. I don't, I don't. I think they do name drop Thanos in the first Avengers movie. Like, doesn't Iron Man come out of that wormhole, like, kind of hearing that name or, like, knowing that. I no, so, uh, I. I don't. I don't think he. I don't think his name was mentioned in the first Avengers movie. He just said at the I end. I think. Yeah, okay. In, in my experience, though, going into these movies, whenever you get that teaser towards the end. If someone doesn't get what's going on, nine times out of ten, they'll turn around to someone else in the audience and be like, "Hey, right, who is that?" Uh -huh. And I guess they'll, that's what they want they'll you get to do, that yeah. information. That happened to me at the end of this and one. Then, Some guy at the end <laughs> yeah. of this credit, who was like, "What's that mean?" And I was like, "Captain Marvel." Look at yeah. Me. <laughs> <laughs> And then, I'm smart. <laughs> and then while while that doesn't give them the full like understanding of well why does that matter i feel like guardians of the galaxy actually did a really good job in setting up who he is as a character with the whole backstory of him being nebula and gamora's father and mm -hmm. making them fight and replacing nebula's body parts every time she lost 
So I th- I think just from that movie, it was already set up even even more so that this guy's a fucking menace. Right. I agree. Uh, yeah. And. And going know, into I... Infinity War, having having seen that, I feel like is enough for the normal audience to kind of know what kind of troubles in store. Mm-hmm. I guess my main problem is is uh, in a nutshell. <laughs> hey, uh, Austin Powers in a nutshell um, was just that that he isn't as narratively set up as I would have liked it. I guess like. Um, He's more set up through the the. But I guess they're count they're counting on that kind of stuff as as through the uh, hunt from for the, the stones. Is, yeah, it's for well, I know. I mean, like, I think they're counting on the stuff you're talking about in the theater of people asking who is that and and looking around for this information and stuff like that because they kind of it's kind of more of a like a community of fans at this point instead of just a gen- general popcorn eating audience. Mm-hmm. Like, there's people that go see these movies you know because it's a marvel movie and it's not just a yeah. oh the new batman movie's coming out or whatever i would anymore. even suggest that like this movie is impossible to watch as a casual viewer i don't think yeah. i don't think you can watch this without having done Which... the the back you know the back research and have watched certain movies before yeah. i don't think you have to watch all like 18 other movies that came first but there are definitely <laughs> things like the first avengers yeah. and the guardians of the galaxy like you want to have watched those maybe civil war before going yeah. into this for sure right see i i was i was trying to keep that frame of reference in mind going into it the second time and i was i was looking for it and was like okay well would you know someone be confused uh when this is going on when th- that's going on and they actually if if you just take a, a look at it. They they do a very good job of being like, oh yeah, so this is what happened in this movie. Like mm-hmm. Thor goes through his entire like filmography Family. and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah and and Peter goes through the whole Guardians of the Galaxy filmography. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tony has to explain Civil War to Bruce Banner. Uh, like there's 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 so much that they do explain they're like look we know this is tons of movies built up to this Mm. but there's still going to be people who come here who have only seen one or two or three yeah so they they the context is definitely there oh for sure like i'm not arguing that i would just think like you know it's good to have those points of references because then you know like oh yeah that's the movie that led up to this and so like i still think it's important to have watched those to really get the full like ramifications of these character moments and everything but they definitely do a great job of pointing out like which ones and like what's you know what's led up to it yeah in a jokey like oh this is part of a joke like but it is it's still subconsciously yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and it works well Um, it works really well you started off saying, uh, like describing the scene, like the first scene of the movie, um, as if you were, we were going to like go through the whole movie chronologically, and I think that might also be really hard to do, especially for those of us who have only seen it one time, uh, because <laughs> there's there's so much that happens in the movie that I can't remember, you know, the order of events necessarily. Um, I think that we should probably just focus on you know just whatever comes to mind instead of trying to okay then was it did they go to the planet and then this happened or did it oh god i don't know it was it was three hours long <laughs> i'm not trying to go through chronologically i was just yeah, like okay. i guess we'll start at the beginning <laughs> um yeah. so the iron spider suit that was really cool you yeah. talk about that i liked that i like seeing Smile. spider-man in space yeah <laughs> that's all i had <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm trying yeah. to think. I uh, so I told um, I told James this. I don't know if I told you, but um, an ex of mine who's still a really good friend actually worked on the movie, and I'm trying to. She said that she had something to do with Spider-Man's legs in the final battle or something, and I'm trying to remember. Real legs, <laughs> real legs, said, or metal legs. Up. Which legs? But Robot yeah, like, Tom like, Holland's legs. She said, <laughs> <laughs> she, 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 she worked between like, yeah, shots. she she massages his legs. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. I don't remember what it was. From Maddie's legs to Tom Holland's legs. Oh. 
It's a downgrade. Ooh. Down. It's a downgrade. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Maddie we, for Spider Man. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, okay, I got it. Yeah, she said <laughs> she worked second unit that did almost two months filming the final fight scene with Thanos and a bunch of the Spider Man effects. Nice. Wait, but the final fight scene with Thanos is on Earth. No, it's the one on Titan. Yeah, I Whoa. mean. No. <laughs> no, no, you're right. Yeah, you're right. It was on Earth, but like Spider Man's final fight maybe scene was on Titan. It's contradictory information here. Yeah, maybe maybe there was a little this. bit of both. Because, <laughs> well, I'm th- I'm thinking. I, I know. Well, what, it, I'm thinking it, it had to be a little bit of Weren't both. They, they were both going on at but the same not... time, though. They were both going on. Like they were fighting Thanos on Titan while his army and was it... on Earth. And then no, Thanos, I'm comes, when Thanos to comes to Earth. Yeah, yeah, but but that battle is still <laughs> happening at the same time. <laughs> yeah, Thanos was in two places at once. He was in one place. His army was in another. I don't know. It's it's not it's not that army. important. <laughs> <laughs> I had a so, really I noticed something I thought was really cool. Okay. There was okay. a lot of dialogue in this movie that I think was foreshadowing the next one, um, uh-huh. in terms of especially for Captain Marvel, and part of that um, I noticed first on the Guardians ship where Peter and R- Rocket are arguing about who the captain is on the ship. And Peter's like, oh, I'm yeah, the yeah. captain. And Rocket's like, no, I, I'm the captain. And then like later, Rocket kind of brings it back up. He's like, I guess now I have to start acting like a captain sort of thing, you know? Right. Um, so there's like a lot of commentary on what it takes to be a captain, why you need a captain <laughs> on your team. There's Captain America, you know? And he's right. like, he doesn't even really call himself that. He goes by his name steve rogers but it's still yeah. like people are like hey captain nice nice of you to join us so there's like a big like i noticed on the dialogue they're like leading up to the concept that like you need a captain to bring your team together you know mm. and so when captain marvel comes in the next movie i think that's I'm sure that'll that's come back definitely yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah that's cool. I, I wasn't even thinking about that but that's yeah yeah there is there's so got, much foreshadowing keep in this around. movie yeah. <laughs> that's why you have yeah. me here yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, no, I thought that was awesome. So. so the Infinity Stones, I thought there were a handful of times that they were really creatively used um, and that they're like either visually or as part of the plot. Like I really like whenever he uses the Reality Stone to trick them into thinking that the Collector is still yeah, there. Yeah, that was or cool. Even, and they even include the Collector like waving goodbye, like mm-hmm. he's sentient within this or whatever. That was a scary uh, moment. That's when I realized, yeah. oh shit, this guy is like, how are they going to beat him if they don't know it's real? Yeah. And like, how do and, we know uh, it's real? I don't. <laughs> and I don't know. Used it. I don't know if you guys noticed in that scene um, when they're coming up on the collector's whole thing and you can see his collection and everything tobias funk from arrested development oh, yeah, is in yeah. one of the collector's really? pages <laughs> That's yeah great. So, yeah so the, the... nice nice wow <laughs> um, and so like, so, so in my brothers, head the Russo means... brothers directed arrested development right yeah in yeah. my head though that means thanos is a fan of arrested development <laughs> since he put tobias funk in his changed reality honestly who... so is he really that bad of a guy <laughs> who isn't a fan that's a great show <laughs> that guy Th- that guy was not one of the people to disappear thanos at the end of the movie. <laughs> has great taste in entertainment <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so he uses it then and he uses it to show uh dr strange i think uh what titan used to look like Mm -hmm. later in the movie um and i think that because there's six infinity stones and there's so many characters in this movie and like i think my my um i give them a lot of leeway uh because they had to put so many things into this movie that um if there are things that i dislike about it usually i can forgive them because i think about myself trying to write this movie and going oh my god like this it's an impossible task and uh, and they did for what for what it is like it's it's they did a really good job i think they probably potentially the best they could have done with it um but that being said i think there were a few times when you know he has he's he has four or five or six infinity stones on this gauntlet and he you know just chooses to punch someone or to <laughs> you know like he 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 uses the purple one which is what is it supposed to do which that's uh, the power stone yeah. Okay, but all he like he just uses it to like 
Green Lantern bubble people and move them out of the way most of the time. Um, or there's times when, you know, you think like, why doesn't he use this stone here and he doesn't, which I guess is so that the movie can progress well, and that people did, don't just all die immediately. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, it came across as a Green Lantern thing for sure. Like how it takes willpower to activate that. Mm-hmm. So if he's distracted, like when they all gang up on him with Mantis yeah, kind yeah, of puts yeah. him to sleep, he can't use the power, you know? Um, I don't know I if that's if actually they, how it works, but that's how it came across to me. Yeah, because they have to make him have some kind of, uh, you know, mental weakness. Right. Otherwise, he would just continuously, like, reverse time to do everything he wants or whatever. And, right, right. Yeah. Which is something... Well, I think... Yeah. No, go for it. I think there came a point where Thanos decided... Because throughout the movie, essentially, he was only killing people in search of the stones... Or mm-hmm. if they were a direct threat to him. So I think there's a, a point to where past that he just wanted the the deaths to be completely random and him not be the judge of it. Right. And so yeah. if he didn't not... have to kill somebody, then, you know, use a weaker means to just get them out of your way. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I guess uh, that's kind of a difference between him and Darkseid is like they both they do both want to you know, rewrite the universe or whatever, but mm-hmm. uh, whereas Darkseid is more of a just, I want to murder people for the sake of murdering them because I'm a bad person. Well, Darkseid's looking Thana. for the anti-life equation, which is yeah, but, basically the same deal. It turns everyone into, like, a mindless, like, follower of him. Yeah, I just mean, you know, if someone came, if someone just says the wrong word to, to Darkseid, he breaks their spine, you know, or whatever. Or zaps versus, them with a mega beam yeah, and yeah, sends it to the next pit. Yeah, but, like, Thanos is, like, he at least seems like he, not to, you know, I'm not trying to defend the guy or, or anything, I'm just trying to avenge him, um, but the, he, he, like, he has moments where you can see he has, you know, he loves Gamora, or he has a, he has a heart about things, he, he feels emotions instead of just being, like, a big... Right. kill everything guy, and, and then the fact, yeah, the fact that people are dying in mass at the end of the movie is because of his plan not necessarily because he wants right. to kill those specific he, people he definitely is reluctant about it like he kind of it's almost like he treats as like he's a gardener and he's pulling out the weeds of the universe in a way to make it yeah. better um in his in his sense it's definitely still genocide of course but um I I did notice, like, in his conversation with Spider-Man, he swats him away and calls him an insect, which right. is funny, except spiders are not insects, they are arachnids, they are arachnids yeah. except <laughs> he, be a less but he views insult, him yeah. as a bug, he still views him as, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. even though he is a spider, but... <laughs> yeah, I think it might have just been coincidence <laughs> that he's, like, he doesn't recognize that that suit is necessarily a spider Maybe. person, he just <laughs> says insect, yeah. yeah. But, like, I think that that's, like, you know, Darkseid has his, like, arch nemesis in Superman, Thanos doesn't really have that, he's just these people are in his way like I th- just stop I think he does i'm just comics. trying to do a thing i know in this movie though mm-hmm. like he at least like he's i'm just trying to do the thing i want to do please stop trying to stop me what the hell are you doing get out of my way <laughs> so. there's a guy so i haven't read infinity gauntlet have any of you read infinity gauntlet the original book no <laughs> no um i have not read infinity gauntlet <coughs> yeah. i read the first of uh, the first issue of i guess a more recent infinity okay. title i'm not i'm not sure what it was maybe got, infinity it's... countdown i think that's out right now i don't know but May, did uh, you do you know like about adam warlock was... can you tell us about adam warlock at all like is he someone that we might see in the next movie is he like Thanos' arch nemesis or is that like the right word so uh, the guy that shows up at the end of guardians 2 in the like weird chamber thing is that what you're talking is about? he oh yeah, yeah so that's I forgot about that. That's, yeah. So he's he's at the end of he's at the end of Guardians two in that chamber, and past that, I honestly don't know much of anything about him except for he's part of the Infinity story. As much as We're I love DC these boys. movies, for some <laughs> yeah, I mean, as much as I love these movies, for some reason, Marvel comics don't jump off the shelf at me as much as DC ones do. I feel the same so way. So I. I I'm not as versed in yeah mm-hmm. the mythos outside of my the films. understanding of Adam Warlock is that he does help fix the universe at the end of the Infinity War. Um, I just don't know how. 
Yeah, I don't know what he does. <laughs> but like, maybe we'll his powers are or whatever. Since he was teased at the end of Guardians 2, that could very mm-hmm. well be like we know so James Gunn recently confirmed that Guardians 3 takes place after um Avengers 4. So we know that for sure, but so maybe there's like some connective thread with Adam Warlock there, but we'll Man, probably it's, see. It's 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 going to be weird having a Guardians movie with only Rocket. Yeah. <laughs> right? Cuz cuz nobody's cuz nobody's coming back from that. Well, you can't Rocket, just come back from Rocket and Bucky's arm. He'll have He'll have the <laughs> yeah. Winter Soldier's arm too. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. That'd be funny. I just, was that still that, there? Okay, so something that upset me, I I watched it the second time and after watching it the first time, like I got out and I was like, "Wait, did Bucky's arm go with him? Because no. technically, that's not part no. of him. So it should have it should have just stayed there. But going back the second time, the arm is part of the is the first thing that started turning to ash. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, and I'm yeah. just and I'm just like I, I was I was sitting there like, but then how's Rocket gonna get the Wait, arm? <laughs> like yeah. you said that you I set that sworn, up. I could have sworn should I saw have the arm like, in the grass by itself. Maybe no, maybe I need to watch know. it again. I don't know. <laughs> I need no, to watch it. it again. It definitely it definitely was the first part of Bucky that started going. Uh, and I was like I see the the reason I was questioning that though is because like I mean people's clothes aren't part of them, but obviously those got yeah. snapped as well. Well, this is a world so that was just like this is a just, world where the Hulk has these stretchy pants that <laughs> yeah. you know, like clothes who knows? They they they're magic. <laughs> Clothes are weird. There's man. there's <laughs> there's stretchy pants. There's a there's a living cloak. I mean, yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, that, those were okay. So, so let's let's talk about things we liked about the movie, like comedy wise. Uh, I I really liked the all the um, like him the robe slapping away Tony Stark as he's like leaning on the big whatever i don't know what it was called he had like a specific the, uh, the cauldron of the cosmos it. yeah okay <laughs> there you go <laughs> I, I did like uh, their goatee douchebag rivalry going on between dr strange and, <laughs> and tony stark yeah even though they didn't like directly recognize each other's right. uh, it's, goatees. it's because you can tell that like they're building dr strange <laughs> to be the new like tony stark ish character like just the sure. asshole in the Avengers, and then did you Buck- did you guys notice the uh, the little Sherlock Easter egg they gave us? No, I was looking for one, but I'm still- so when um when they're when they're making the plan to either go to Titan or return to Earth, and Tony explains why they should go to Titan. He mm-hmm. says, "Do you concur, Doctor?" Which is something that Sherlock usually said to Doctor Watson. Oh, okay. oh nice. That's funny. I had been waiting. So for it was. A, it wasn't. Uh, I had been waiting for a no shit Sherlock, but uh-huh. it never happened. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it wasn't as on the nose as that. But I, f- I yeah. feel like, I feel like a lot of the humor in this movie, like they tried to not be on the nose. Like yeah. when, um, when Ebony Maw first showed up, like everybody since the trailer has been like, haha, Voldemort, blah blah blah, and then Tony's like Squidward. Yeah, yeah, that was good. That was really good. Yeah, that's cool. I, 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 I was like expecting it. the scene with Rocket and Bucky about the arm. Like, that was something I was going into. I was like, yeah. if I don't see that happen, I will be a little <laughs> upset. So I was really glad to see that joke. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, yeah, we already talked about the, like, I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora uh-huh. or whatever? That was, that was good. Although, for in terms of Drax specifically, I thought that the... I really liked the, the standing invisible parts. Of yeah, so I, so I, yeah, so I really liked uh, Star Lord and Gamora are like kissing, and then the camera pulls back, and Drax is just standing there, really slowly eating chips or whatever. He's and been then there he for says, an hour. Uh, or, is uh, how long have you been there? An hour. I, and I wish it had just stopped right there because it, then it just kept going for way too long. I was like, all right, okay, funny, ha ha ha, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> so, I don't know. Well, uh, I, I usually James, like that. That, that stuff. should resonate with you. Don't we get plenty of comments that your jokes go too long? <laughs> That's a good point. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, time for me to leave the conversation. So, I <laughs> no, um, I think, I think, yeah. I'll let you go first, Dad. No, you go first. <laughs> I'm just not going to say anything the rest oh. of this conversation. You, your jokes I are mean, too I was, long. I was going to say, I, th- I think my favorite joke of the film was um, 
Well, first of all, that Peter Dinklage was a fucking giant. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. pretty good. I love that and too. Then, <laughs> and then after after that, while they're while they're there, the whole <laughs> it'll kill you only yeah. if I die. Yes. 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 That's what, that's what <laughs> killing you means. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. As soon as Peter Dinklage came on screen, the entire theater was just whispering, like, is that, is that Tyrion Lannister? Yeah. I don't know. Who is, is that who that is? is that... Yes. Yes. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. I had a guy Speaking... sitting next to me in the theater who, yeah. I went to a theater where we could, like, get some food. And this guy was just oh, like, one of those. he was feasting. <laughs> he was feasting the whole time. Had multiple trays, multiple foods. And he would uh-huh. get to the point where he would just like be holding the trays up there. Like, what do I do with these? What do I do? I got to the point where I was like, dude, let me take these. I'm going to go put them where they belong for you. So that you can stop stressing out about it. <laughs> uh, it was it was really weird. And then like his wife would leave. And she like tripped in the middle of the aisle on her way out. On, oh, on one of the trays that he'd put on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just this like ridiculous experience, and, and so like she would come back in and be like, "What I miss?" And he would whisper so loudly, like Spider Man yeah. did this, and I was, ah, uh, it was really bad. But so I sat down <laughs> next to uh, I Jessica and I had to get separate seats uh, because we got our tickets way too late, and so I when I went to go sit in my seat, it was, you know, it was just one single seat between a bunch of other people. That, that was my there. deal. That was my deal. Yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> When uh, so I when I sat down, I noticed on my left there's like a family of five, and there's like a little kid, there's like a teenager, there's a mom and dad, there's like a grandma. And I was just oh no, like they're gonna talk this whole movie. God damn it, this is so stupid. I, every single time they said nothing the whole movie, oh. I was so happy. But the people on my right that I did not expect to say anything because they looked about my age and they had you know already interacted with the guy at the start when I was oh hey are you gonna use this cup holder and oh no man go ahead and I was like okay That's this guy's nice. cool, but. I think he brought his girlfriend that had never seen any of these movies because she wasn't asking anything, but anytime any character would come on screen, he would be like, Thor, Spider-Man, Hulk, like explaining. And I, I would just like glance at him every once in a while like, yeah, uh-huh, I know. <laughs> and But it wasn't even when the first time, it nice. wasn't the first time they would come on, he would, he would do that. But then it would also be like, <clears throat> like Thor re-enters a scene via lightning like your first thing you see is lightning you don't know it's thor yet but you know it's uh-huh. thor and so the lightning comes on screen and he'll go like thor and like i ah, <laughs> yes <laughs> i know i was able to ignore it eventually but it, it was at the start of his own god damn it <laughs> i think i think i did that so, once i think i audibly said out loud like a name of someone coming <laughs> like i forget who it was though but it was someone who's Spider-Man. Like, not, yeah i don't i don't remember so when Peter Squidward. Dinklage showed up, he was just like, don't know that one. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. Um, so those yeah. were our but, uh, theatrical experience jokes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, well, the first, the, first time, the first time I went, I had no problems at all with the audience because I was too wrapped up in what was going on. <laughs> but the second time I went, to my left was a group of like six high school kids. And... God, it was like it mm-hmm. was just obnoxious. Fucking. Yeah, you don't really have to. So I, can guess. I noticed, yeah. like, <laughs> right, right, right when well, right when the movie started, like, they decided that the two that were closest to me weren't gonna sit in their seats anymore. So I look over and, like, I guess they're on dates or whatever because there's girls like lying down on the guys or what, and I'm just like. Ugh. What did you get seats for? I don't know, but I was just like, I was just like whatever. That doesn't affect me at all. That's good. It and sounds... then all of a sudden, oh, all I... of a sudden, I noticed <laughs> this smell. Oh no! And so I look back over, and one of the girls had kicked her shoes off. So I was just smelling wow. foot sweat the entire oh, second wow. time. That's still better than a high like... school experience I had. I went on a date in high school, and this girl's like. Let's sit in the back. I like to crawl around the back of the seat to go down the entire aisle and crawl back. I was like, that's really weird. That's really (laughs) weird. That's a really weird tradition you have. (laughs) I don't... uh, Let's not hear about these experiences you've had. (laughs) And and I'm married her and we have five kids now. It's great. I was about to say, like, is it Brittany? (laughs) No. But... Just say, just... uh, So... 
<laughs> we got home after the date, and she's like, is it okay if I just climb around? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a nice row of chairs I can crawl behind? <laughs> I like to pretend I'm Spider-Man after I see Spider-Man movies. So, okay. So, back to the movie instead of high school experiences. I I already mentioned this in um in the group chat we've got, but I really enjoy how they dealt with the Defenders problem without even bringing the Defenders up because mm-hmm. The only, the only, the only thing that happened in New York was that one spaceship. They didn't have, they didn't have any of the battle fodder or anything set up mm-hmm. that can't to come to New York. And mm-hmm. I, I don't think they can do that anymore now that we have all these heroes that they're never going to show because it would make sense to see those heroes fighting all the battle fodder. But instead, they left that for Wakanda. The only thing that happened in New York was the the spaceship, which is way yeah. above the uh, the Defenders' pay grade. Mm-hmm. And when when Iron Man and Doctor Strange walk out of the the sanctum, the only thing I was thinking is, okay, so are we going to see Brett Mahoney? Are we going to see Misty Knight? Are we going to see mm-hmm. you know any of the beat cops from the shows? And if we don't, it's still you know, make sense for them not to be there because New York's a huge place and they could be doing crowd control elsewhere. Mm-hmm. But um, I did notice, though, second time watching through, that they did leave an Easter egg. Um, the the game that Groot was playing is called Arcade Defenders. Yeah, Defenders, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. That's fun. <laughs> um, yeah, that that scene, it only takes place on, like, a, like one city block. Mm-hmm. Um, so it makes sense that they wouldn't, yeah, have those people. Um, it that scene did remind me uh, a little bit of Man of Steel, the like Smallville fight that they have, because um, there's like a big guy and a little person, mm-hmm. like they're like in armor and they're aliens and they're just crushing everything. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, it didn't end with uh, you know the military coming in or anything. It was over before that yeah. would have happened. The ship but, like takes um, off, starts flying away, yeah. and then Iron Man and Spider Man catch up to it. Yeah, and I did. I did like a lot of the moments of tension in the movie, and one of those was in that scene where they're all just standing around and like, "Doc, are you moving your hair like that?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, not at the moment. And mm-hmm. then they and like it takes a while before we actually see what's going on. Right. And even then, it's almost like a Cloverfield kind of POV, like what is this in the sky that like we just keep following Tony Stark out the door and around mm-hmm. the corner and all this stuff. Like we don't know what's going on. So that's that was cool. pretty cool. I loved his yeah. new nanotech suit, the way that formed. Yeah, yeah. And like it had the, it was the <coughs> first time that we saw his like supersonic cannon blast thing that he, he did later I in the movie. Think so? Cause that's like, yeah. that, that reminded me of like the Marvel versus Capcom arcade games. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like that's Iron Man's like signature move is doing just, that like. He should have just, yeah, whipped out a giant cannon and. <laughs> he, he did. He did on Titan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does that move. Yeah. And that was great. Yeah. Like, I think that was the first time I've ever seen him do that. Yeah. It was cool. Um, was... I was missing, because of the nanotech suit, they wound up like covering up the shot that we see in the trailer where he walks up and like takes his glasses off really slowly like in a, it was a really cool shot in the trailer right but that t- turned into him turning into that suit which was fine mm-hmm. but like it was kind of the same thing in the black panther trailer where you see killmonger pull his knives out but then in the movie he does that and turns into a black oh, panther yeah, suit yeah. so cool. but yeah i don't know it was cool still yeah um so, I liked the joke of the, the uh, Peter Parker and his friends on the school bus, and he's like, "Hey, oh, make yeah. a distraction!" And oh my god, we're gonna die! He's like, "Well, okay, yeah, that, that works." works yeah. Yeah. <laughs> something, something else about that early New York scene that has me thinking is, so I, I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but there's a uh, there's a Star Wars Easter egg in almost every single. Um, Marvel movie since uh, I oh, think yeah, yeah. Thor: The Dark World's the well, first one they did it with, where they an arm. Lucasfilm yeah, has yeah they take they take an arm or a hand. Lucasfilm yeah, yeah. is very involved. That's all I'm guessing. Yeah, but yeah, so so they 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 take so they take an arm or a hand, and that happened three times in this movie. We got that yeah. with the Hulk Buster. Mm. We got that with Groot, and then we got that with that uh, the the child of Thanos that came to New York with the portal. 
and oh yeah, yeah. and Rocket wanted it's, it's, to get it's Bucky's weird. Arm, like I but didn't. <laughs> right, but like, he didn't. I can, <laughs> but I can I so so I can understand them doing it to the Hulk Buster as that being you know the the Star Wars reference. I can understand from a narrative standpoint Groot needing to lose his arm for the the axe to be made. Right. But then I'm I just I keep thinking about the the dude losing his hand in that New York fight because it just it just makes sense that maybe Doctor Strange could have done that to Thanos to get the gauntlet off. And stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. I was thinking that too. Yeah, why not just cut off his arm? Um, yeah. <laughs> which I mean like I mean, from a from a narrative standpoint, you can explain it away as, well, he did say he's seen 14 million futures, and I guess that right. one just didn't pan out. Right. But it's it's what it's a left-handed glove, and now Thanos would only have a right hand. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, we do, we so. know so little about him. It's probably not a thing he can do. But who knows if in this universe, maybe like he can still zombie like control his hand outside of his body or something. Maybe like, yeah, I don't know. we don't know that for uh, sure. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was a little weird that uh, going back to um, the school bus. Uh, you know, we see Spider Man, Peter Parker's friend. I can't remember his name. Uh, the kid from the, his movie mm-hmm. uh, on the bus, Ned. and then we all yeah, and then we also see um, uh, Pepper Potts for a, a few seconds, and all these like yeah, the sidekicks you know, like Doctor see, Strange's um, friend, yeah, Wong, yeah yeah, 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 but they're but and they and that's fine like to have them in there. Um, I think because they did stuff like that, they probably could have snuck in like a oh here's Daredevil watching around a corner or something like mm-hmm. that but then you probably would think that if they introduced him that they were going to bring him back at some point and they wouldn't want to so maybe not maybe y'all could comment on this a little more than me but I believe now they're separate entities I don't think the Netflix shows are connected to the MCU officially anymore because of Ike Perlmutter the guy who's in charge of Marvel TV like he and Kevin mm-hmm. Feige just don't get along at all so Kevin Feige has basically pushed him out of the equation so that they don't have to deal with each other so i'm i I think they're technically in the same universe but they yeah i think on a on a corporate level that would be a difficult thing to do right yeah i mean mean, they're they're even narratively they're definitely i don't think they pay attention to what they do in the netflix shows anymore i think they don't care like it's up to the netflix shows not to contradict the movies i think the movies are gonna do what they want so yeah which is sad. Yeah, no, I mean but... the movies. The movies have always been, you know, the 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 cream of the crop. This is mm-hmm. what we care about, and the shows have to follow through. That's why Agents of Shield got a slow start because they had to wait for Winter Soldier to be like, oh no, our whole premise. Oh, right, geez. Right. So mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's not it's not just because of uh, Feige and um, what's his face right, right. arguing. It's just the 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 shows like the with how the scheduling works it's just you've got to write so much show and and have them all out and then all of a sudden like three movies happen for Mm -hmm. twenty thousand episodes of tv and you can't always make it you know right right well i'm saying i i would not be surprised if the marvel movies are like yeah okay we want to use daredevil or we want to use ghost rider in this next movie i would not be surprised if they just recast and just like totally ignored well there's stuff dead like i think it would be kind of rude to the fans to do that you know but like i wouldn't be surprised to see it happen i I honestly don't if they if they want to bring Daredevil to the movies, I don't think that they'll recast Charlie Cox. I hope not. He's great. That's uh Yeah, I think the casting's fine. Like I just Yeah, his know. his portrayal is A well, Ghost Rider and I think the Ghost Rider specifically is in Agents of Shield, which is definitely connected, so it's Right, a little more thoroughly. But they're yeah. also they have ABC behind them who's a lot more like yeah. owned by Disney. It's a lot more in that realm. It's it's all just like a little weird. <laughs> I think it I think it's something that people want to see enough that they will do it eventually, but I think, you know, right. maybe at right now it's not the most important thing cuz especially like this they you know, I think that Infinity War and whatever sequel title are the the culmination of the movies specifically and mm-hmm. that they don't expect people to be watching all these affiliated TV no, shows. So no. 
And Maddie, you brought up something about if they ever brought back Coulson, like he just re-died from the same injury or something oh, like yeah. that. Is that going show? on in he, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Coulson is dying from the same injury. He um he made a deal with Ghost Rider, um, and Ghost Rider possessed him momentarily to so he could sneak up on the big bad villain of last season. And part of the deal was that Coulson ends up losing all of the the Cree Tahiti project stuff that was inside of him, and so the wounds open back up and is slowly killing him. Mm. Okay. So you were saying that was a potential excuse they could use if they do bring him back for that they wouldn't have to explain where he's been this whole time because he's still dying from the same injury or whatever. He still if, if he came back to life somehow magically or whatever that it's not like it's as if nothing has happened or something. it's like the movie can reference the the wound from avengers yeah. but it, right. everything that happened in ages of shield still could it, it like right. it's a full circle right. yeah, yeah yeah so that's right yeah point. so okay so i guess essentially so my theory is that <laughs> in agents of shield there's a time loop going on and uh, the Fitz, Fitz is sure that you can't change time, but we've seen Doctor Strange who knows that you can, mm -hmm. and so they're thinking that Coulson's gonna be saved or whatever, but I, th I think with this week's episode, they're caught up to the very start of Infinity War. There's like a, there's a, hey, you see what's going on in New York? Reference, and They've got three episodes left, so my assumption is that the three episodes are all going to take place up until the end of Infinity War, and that Coulson, who's dying of that wound, will possibly bite the dust while also being snapped right. out of existence, and when people get brought back, he'll be part of it. I can see Which I think surprise. is why they're... Yeah. So what? I was just I'm kind of surprised that they are referencing uh Infinity War on the show like so soon, I guess. They've been doing the that is... with all the movies. No, I know. Yeah. yeah, but I mean like since it just came out and they, and they've been so like don't tell anyone about anything about the movie kind of a thing and then like unless well, you just turn on channel 2 and accidentally watch Agents of Shield and then you know what's going. <laughs> we'll see the the so so what I'm thinking is that cuz they all all they said about it is hey you see what's going on in New York and okay. we see in the trailers that oh something's going on in New York. Right. Okay. And so I mean that's that isn't a spoiler in and of itself. So if the next three episodes, because Infinity War happens over maybe the course of two days. So if the next three episodes all take place within the course of a day, mm -hmm. by the time the you know by the time the last episode happens, if the snap happens you know concurrently with the season finale, then that's been almost a month that people have gone to see the movie. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's fine. So it's not like. It's not as and and it doesn't spoil who gets taken away in the movie either. So and I'm sure that it's just like the oh, people that watch Agents so this of does Shield happen. Watch these movies, right? So. I think it was season two that started off with them like leading up to Avengers two, and um like basically giving Shield the intel of where Loki's scepter was held in like outside Wakanda, right? Like there were episodes yeah, leading yeah, yeah. up to that. And then at the end mm -hmm. of that season, I think it goes into Winter Soldier. So they've definitely been touching on these films as they've come out. And like as the show is released, they I've noticed they've tried really hard to keep it synchronized. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. So I mean, well, in in more recent in more recent time, they've tried to I guess get away from that just because the movies haven't been working in real time. Like Guardians right. of the Galaxy's been, you know, so so that's why they've been doing like thematically, they've been going to space and dealing with the Kree and everything. And I, but, have, a, and I have a Kree it, question for you, actually. Is the what's up? Do you think what's the Kree, the Scree? <laughs> wait, the Kree, the Kree is what they're called. K R Scree. I forget. I forget what they're called, but the the Kree, right? So they're like uh -huh. they're related yes. to Captain Marvel, who we'll see in the next movie. 
very heavily, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And they're so, also like Fantastic Four villains. I I, th- I believe um, I think they started in that book. That's that's what I remember. There's like the whole. Uh, if I'm remembering correctly, I want to say the Kree Scroll War like started in the the Fantastic Four book. It's the scrolls that I'm thinking of that are from Fantastic Four. Yeah, the scrolls. That's why I was thinking Scree. I combined them both together. Uh. But yeah, the, yeah. But the the yeah the scrolls. Um, I I would not be surprised to see the scrolls <laughs> appear for the as like the next big villains in like Avengers Five if they do Secret Invasion because that would like be it one would be like it could be a potential continuity sort of rewriting thing to say like hey these characters were uh, scrolls the whole time Mm -hmm. and you know maybe that gives them an opportunity to recast people um but especially if they're related very heavily to captain marvel it seems like a natural progression of where that's what we didn't catch the first time was that when Thanos snaps his fingers it only affects scrolls. Only scrolls go away. <laughs> <laughs> actually, Maybe. Actually, actually, I do, I do, I do have a couple um, theories actually. about. Um, no, I do, I do have a couple theories though about uh, uh, sk- skipping from the the Kree thing. Yeah, Krees are confirmed to be and, in Captain Marvel. And, I don't know scroll. much about scroll. the character. Scrolls are scrolls are in Captain Marvel. <laughs> but, I think. Krees were the well, no, the, um, Kree, humans Kree's, Kree, people, Kree's, right? Crees are definitely in. So, okay, so Cree blood is used to make the Inhumans, and was also used to um, to bring <laughs> to bring Coulson back to life. Right. But the movie side, I think the I think the only Cree we've seen is Ronan, and okay. the the people surrounding him. And Ronan is confirmed to be in Captain Marvel. Cool, nice. So there will be, yeah. So there will, so there will be Krees in Captain Marvel. Um, but okay, I was, I was jumping from there to something else, and I, oh yeah. So a theory about, I guess, <coughs> like why Thanos' uh, snap affected some and not others. Um, because, like, I I had a friend who was like, well, why did this person go and not this one? Or why this and that? Like, they were asking, like, why all of, um, like, all of the Guardians except for Rocket? And my theory with that is that we're, we're told in, I guess, the first Guardians that Rocket was made in a lab. Mm-hmm. And so it seems like he's a one of a kind and there's no having to be done there. Ooh, good point. And I think, oh, yeah, yeah. and I think, possibly that could be extrapolated to maybe the Hulk, because the um, I just despite Bruce and Hulk sharing the same body, it's obvious from the conversations that they have that they have different consciousnesses, and <laughs> I'm thinking yes. that Abomination's still out there somewhere. And if Hulk had come out, then there would be Hulk and Abomination, and it's a 50-50 chance that Hulk would have been snapped out. Sure. Okay. So you're saying, like, your prediction is that it's based on, like, species or, like, uh It's like a reverse Noah's Ark. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's a cool idea. Something like that. I mean, I mean, I know, I know, like, for a narrative reason, there's reasons why some people were taken rather than others. But, I mean, like, because the, um, the same guy who was asking me about it asked about Peter. He's like, well, isn't Peter 50% God? And, right. and I was like, yeah. And he's like, well, he, was, he killed his dad. He's the last of his kind. And I was like, well, his dad Maybe said there's... if he killed him, then he wouldn't have all of his powers and stuff anymore. So... From what I can so he's tell, human he's now? basically human. That sounds right. So that makes sense for him to be. Li- now, what um, about the other Peter? Snapped up. What about Peter Parker? Because didn't he get uh, snapped up? And he's the only Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah. Except we have a Venom yeah, movie yeah, well, coming I mean, out in association still... with Marvel. So maybe there's a Venom around. I think this is way too. Oh. <laughs> that that. That brings me to a, another thing, though, is because there, there's rumors about um, there's rumors that Tom Holland was on the set of Venom to right, right. to shoot a I bet a cameo I bet or he whatever. Was. I would not be surprised. I hope he was. 
And and my thought is apparently the way that like people faded to Ash is really similar to how Kaecilius and Doctor Strange got transported to the Dormammu dimension at the end of the movie. And right. so it's possible it's possible that they didn't die and are just hanging out in another reality and that reality might just be the Venom movie. <laughs> so that's so that's where Voldemort it, went. It's not the Venom movie, but I'm sure they're in another reality. <laughs> like I I, I no, but I mean I'm, I'm sure I'm, if that was wrong. Like I yeah. That's got to be where they're going. I'm sure that gives like the the MCU a reason to be like well, that's why there's two Tom Hollands is there's a multiverse mm-hmm. and you can get snapped to different dimensions. I truly think the next movie is going to establish the multiverse and it would be super cool if part of that, it, it, in a way it might feel like a cop out, but if they brought in Fox's X-Men universe into that multiverse and then maybe like integrated the universes after this event, that would be maybe too much for the casual audience to be able to handle but it could be a really easy way to do that. Um, it could also maybe just be simpler if the Fantastic Four are also lost in this realm and that's like a way to recast them and bring them into the MCU because I truly, I've said this before, but I'm predicting that when they announce Phase 4 for the MCU, right. it's going to have a big Fantastic Four logo on that. So right. I, would, I would be so surprised yeah, if I... they approach it any other way. So I, I've... I've seen, um, and I also think that, um, you know, there's a lot of theories about the multiverse being brought in, but I saw one person saying that um, it would be just hilarious if the the movie, before they bring in the whole multiverse concept, that the after credit scene is just Deadpool explaining the... <laughs> The, the rights and everything and like, nice, this is nice. why we couldn't show up here blah 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 <laughs> but now that we can we're gonna do a narrative way to make it make sense I, see you next movie that's great that would be awesome <laughs> in like the weirdest way but I'd be into it I think uh, maybe I would like it if um, you know we're seeing like a multiverse kind of thing and they do like when uh, I think it's the end of flash season one maybe uh where he's like running through some sort of vortex of like timelines and he sees a bunch of random images yeah yeah you see like supergirl you see um something from some movie i feel like you know just something like you see the 90s flash yeah 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 um it'd be kind of cool if they did something like that where like oh, look at all these different worlds we could go to. They don't go to them, but we do see glimpses of, like, yeah. Wolverine or something like that. That'd be That'd sick. Be cool. That'd be really cool. Yeah. It's possible. I think, I think they, they've got they've got to be bringing in the multiverse. We've got, like, the uh, Sony's doing their Spider-Verse movie. Right. And well, I don't an think that, an that movie, Marvel's... Yeah. Right, yeah. No, I know, I know it's animated, but, like, I don't think Marvel's going to be, like... Yeah, let them have the whole multiverse concept to themselves, and we're just not gonna touch it. Right. No. <coughs> yeah, and Doctor. Yeah. Uh, They've already established it in this movie with Doctor Strange looking ahead and be like, "I saw fourteen million different possibilities." Right. You yeah. know, and like we've seen like like Dormammu and everything like being a little different and. Um, <laughs> Dormammu. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, Whatever and, and, and and like I said, there's the whole there's the whole um the agents of shield plot line of is there a time loop and um one of the characters actually brought up this last episode he's like well what about the multiverse theory that all of our choices mm. spin off into different universes mm-hmm. so it seems like they're heavily hinting at it yeah. i feel like benedict cumberbatch has also said something in some interview about like that's that they might be going there in doctor strange sequel or something like that i so. believe it uh, yeah. yeah. So I know I mentioned earlier the the Kree and the scrolls as potential next villains, but if they do bring in Fantastic Four, I think Doctor Doom has potential to be like the next kind of big like not Thanos, not like an intergalactic level, yeah. but in terms of like the Earth like sort of um, Grandmaster, that'd be really cool to see. Um, yeah. Galactus would be a really easy way to kind of like raise the stakes because he literally eats planets, so mm-hmm. that could be super cool. And then I was also thinking Norman Osborn. If, um, cause Spider-Man's got two more solo movies. We know mm-hmm. one of them 
is coming very shortly after Avengers 4. I believe it's been confirmed that uh, the next Spider-Man movie takes place minutes after Avengers 4. Oh, okay. So that's at least what I heard. But Norman Osborn could be hmm. really cool to see <laughs> because in the comics, he ends up being like a government... Like, he, he's in charge of S.H.I.E.L.D. for a little bit. Norman Osborn becomes super powerful. Mm. And so it could be really cool to see him in a Lex Luthor sort of role. Norman Osborn shows up at the end of Avengers 4 and says, Hey, everybody, come with me. We have to Spider-Man Homecoming 2. And then that's... <laughs> then <it doesn't. laughs> I, as cool as that would be, I don't think that they're going to use a Spider-Man villain as... Uh, an overarching big bad until Sony's like, yeah, here, just have the rights back That's true. all yeah. the way. I think so too. And, and yeah. they're and they're they're not going to do that as long as Marvel's making them money, right? Right. So I, I also don't think it's going to be Homecoming two. Like that doesn't seem right. No, it's going to no. be a different high school event, like Spider Man Spring Break. S- Spider Man uh, <laughs> Spring Break. Uh, Woo. Uh, oh, what's the what's the like uh, Spider Man Sadie Hawkins? That's <laughs> Spider Man Spider- Bob. Sp- yeah, exactly. We're gonna get we're gonna get Spider Man Homecoming, Spider Man Prom, Spider Man Sadie Hawkins, and Spider Man Spring Fling. Yeah, yes. one yes. Spring Break. <laughs> Spider Man Spring Break. What? What? That's the full title of the movie. Um, what, so what? that that Red Skull though. Yeah, that was that, that was, was, right. that was red scroll. Is a red scroll? Yeah. No. Um, yeah. No, I, I'm, red scroll was my favorite part of the movie. I think <laughs> it was cool. It was really I'm, random. I'm so upset there. that I'm so upset that he was recast. Yeah, it was. Because it's not. Is that not Hugo Weaving? No, it's not. It's no, it a, wasn't. It was a. It was. It sounded. It was like someone him. from Walking Dead. Wow. It's a. But, it's um, this guy that you see online doing impressions. I think. Really. Uh, but yeah. So. He so sounded he, uh, just like so him. he, yeah. I don't, I don't remember the guy's name, but he got big from doing like YouTube impressions, and then yeah, became yeah. a character wow. on Walking Dead. That's awesome. But I, uh, I'm upset it wasn't Hugo Weaving because there's the whole there's the <laughs> Thanos theory, and where like each Infinity Stone is represented by a letter of Thanos. You have Tesseract, Aether necklace orb and scepter and everyone was like oh the soul stone's gonna be h i think it's heimdall and Mm. i i I made the joke online after (laughs) seeing the movie oh well it was hugo weaving yeah (laughs) and and then it was the red school like but yeah and so somebody was like well actually it wasn't hugo weaving (laughs) and i was like oh well, well, what sorry, is that guy's name? Joke. We have to find out. Uh, what, what about Hooded Nazi? Does that work? Hooded Nazi? <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it work, yeah. Hooded I think Nazi. that was... But no, the Red... So Red Skull showing up was a, a great misdirect in the way that... The, so his whole, like, floating, like, Grim Reaper appearance... Yeah, yeah. People, people off the bat thought it was going to be death. Yeah, right, me too. Right. I thought that right at that like moment. That's, yeah. That was that that was that was my thought. And then once the hood came off and you see it's red skull, like cuz there there's been there's been theories online since Captain America came out that he right. didn't die and he was just teleported space, somewhere right, yeah. because it was waiting for his return. Yeah. Like the effect yeah. the effect was similar to like something that happened in thor like when loki fell off the bifrost and that's what the that's what that stone does is teleport people so Mm -hmm. yeah and so and so i was just like well yeah that makes sense i guess we'll see him again one day and then now it's been like seven years later and i was just like i forgot all about this but yeah 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 which is awesome which also makes me wonder though who else from Captain America could still show up? All of all of those, like all all of the the troops that were just uh-huh. shot with Tesseract power, yeah. are all yeah. just floating out in space somewhere. Maybe yeah. um, Tommy Lee Jones is going to come back and yell at him. I, don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think it's safe to say that every Infinity Stone has two powers. Uh, first and foremost. It has the necessary power of the specific stone. Soul it can turn time, back time or it can do power, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and then mind. every Infinity Stone's second power is to be a big laser beam Ooh. and 
evap evaporate people because <laughs> I think no matter what, like he Thanos will just shoot a color at someone and they'll disintegrate, and that's just what happens. I guess you just have to expect that in a science fiction comic book movie. I think. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, this guy's name is Ross Markand, Marquand, okay. something like that. So he does not have an H in his name. So can but, you can you yeah. remind me? Did Steve Rogers disappear at the end? What's his status at the end of the movie? He's still there. He's still there. But Bucky he's he's still alive. All all of the all of the original Avengers are alive yeah. with the possibility of Hawkeye being up in the air. Right. But it's yeah. very likely that it's very likely that somebody or his entire family yeah, um, all vanished. Mm-hmm. And and he's just like I'm pissed off about this, and I'm gonna go be an Avenger again. So you mentioned over a Facebook message that there was production, like behind the scenes photos of all the Avengers in their original uniforms. Right, like, I had forgotten about yeah, that. Well, video. okay, so so it wasn't so it wasn't all of the Avengers. Um, so they shot uh, they shot Infinity War and Avengers Four at the same time. Mm-hmm. And before Infinity War even came out, like there were set photos leaking, and people thought that it was gonna be for Infinity War. And there's a um, so there's a photo of um, Robert Downey Jr. and Ant Man with Captain America in his outfit that he was wearing in the first Avengers movie. Oh, uh, okay. And so Ant Man's and it, return. Yeah. So it's 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 on it's on a green screen and. It seem it seems very much like it's being set up as their Robert Downey Jr. and Ant Man from our current standpoint are with um, Captain America in the in first the Avengers movie. Um, yeah, is it and is so it 1940s Cap a, or like Avengers n- Cap? A- Avengers. Okay. Yeah, I I. I guess there's Captain America, the first Avenger, and then there's Avengers number right. one, which is the first Avengers movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, but Avengers. so, but so they're, um... Battle New York. So they're on, yeah, so they're on set, and it looks kind of like it's, uh, it's the Battle of New York, and there's, there's a lot of speculation on whether that's Time Stone, uh, fuckery, or mm-hmm. if it has something to do possibly with, um, the, the, um... What was it? Which movie was it? Civil War, um, where Tony has that like reality tech, and he's hanging out with his mom and dad oh, again, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, I feel that I feel like it's more likely that would be something cool to pull on Thanos. There's gonna be because he, I think there's time fuckery. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, they're probably see, not gonna I, do it, but that's. Yeah. I thought it was time fuckery at first, but I feel like that's too obvious and on the nose. And after seeing this movie. I don't think they're doing the obvious anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I do... I would be so, really surprised if Sebastian Stan is not the new Captain America after Avengers 4. I think that's happening. Because mm-hmm. he's just got so many more movies in his contract. Yeah, well, we keep seeing, like, people... T- um, Kevin Feige and people talking about that Infinity War and Avengers 4 are not the conclusion to the mcu but they are the conclusion to this yeah like story um that they've been doing over the, so maybe the next decade will be a completely new set of, of you know starting heroes, with right. spider-man homecoming to uh, whatever that is and going forward, i think we're gonna so. see like dr strange black panther and spider-man kind of be like the guiding force going forward right. yeah in terms of their movies with hopefully with like robert downey you, jr continuing on as like a like in this mentor, mentor came you know, <laughs> I don't want to see him go yet. Hopefully, like I'd love for all of them to stick around as long as they want. He sits at the back computer and and <laughs> makes some soup. There you go. Yeah, yeah. But it's cold now. You know, cold what soup. Would, <laughs> come on, Peter, eat your soup. What would be? What come would on, be kid. a complete you gotta eat your soup. <laughs> You're an adventure now. If Avengers <laughs> eat soup. <laughs> but we're like, on, we're talking about soup, be, Maddie. This is important. <laughs> fuck, fuck the suit. <laughs> but what would be just completely wild for me is if um, if everyone from the snap stays dead because so we've what got kind of soup. Do you think Spider Man? We've got <laughs> we've got a Guardians movie um, planned. We've got a Spider Man movie planned. Mm-hmm. Black Panther. Nothing's been announced yet. And Doctor Strange. While the 
post credit scene set up for Doctor Strange 2, we had a setup in Incredible Hulk for an Incredible Hulk 2 with the leader, and they were just like, oh, well, let's just write that thread off in a tie-in comic. Yeah. You know so that Edward Norton if, has the deepest regrets. Like, <laughs> you could just tell. Oh, definitely, definitely. But so, <laughs> I think it would be, like, just, it would blow me out of the water if the second Spider-Man movie was actually a red herring and they weren't doing it. They are. And, uh, no, I'm sure they are. But if that was a red herring, and then if Guardians of the Galaxy 3 just had Rocket building a new team. <laughs> this is going to be in the multiverse that we're going to see in Avengers 4. Probably. <laughs> what was that? This yeah, is, what do you mean? This is all part, This is all part of the multiverse. It's not really going to happen. Something like that. But maybe. But, um, no. Okay, so something, something you just mentioned with Ed Norton, though. I would love if we get a scene in the next Avengers movie with the reality stone changing um, Bruce Banner and um, and Rhodey Ooh. back into their original <laughs> actors That'd be momentarily. Cool. That'd be really fun. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm like, oh, we didn't even notice. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah um, well, you Ted, you had mentioned in our trailer talk that there were 18 MCU movies on the slate after Infinity War. But I don't know if that was just a rumor at the time or if that was if yeah, that's the truth. Yeah, I mean, none of them have been announced. Well, like, a few of them have been announced. Like we said, there is a Spider-Man yeah. 2 and 3 that are happening. Um, Guardians 3, Captain Marvel, all, all those are in that. Um, yeah. It's just that they have that many movies in development. Yeah. But not all of them. Like, we don't know what they, they are. what they are. Yeah, yeah. so... Who knows? They've been really sneaky about they're not releasing the yeah. title of Avengers 4 until uh, like a month from now or something, I think is what they said, because nice. they want people to absorb the movie. Yeah, yeah. Because um, apparently I th I th the title has I think something it's... to do with the end of this one or something. Uh, so. Maybe. I think it's going to be Avengers Endgame. Yeah. I, I, I think, right, I think it's going to be Endgame. Doctor Strange I saw, says that. Right, right. Now the Endgame well, starts. It's, it's not just it's, it's not just because Doctor Strange says that. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's <laughs> one site that's reporting that that's leaked already. Mm -hmm. But there's also Doctor Strange said that. And then in Age of Ultron, like there's there's a part where Tony like motions up towards space and he says, that that's Endgame. Mm -hmm. So... Okay. They mirrored that from Avengers 2 to Avengers 3, and it makes sense that if that leak is real, then yeah, that's that's that that'd be real. Yeah, yeah. That'd be cool. Okay. I, I'd and be then we can listen title. back to this episode in a month from now, whenever that's not the case. And then Avengers <laughs> 5. I I expect one day we're gonna have a new Avengers movie, and we're gonna have a secret mm -hmm. Avengers movie. It's just a matter mm -hmm. of time. They start putting the subtitles in front of the movie right. instead of after the, in front of the title. The yeah. Uncanny Avengers when the X-Men <laughs> yeah. join it. The Amazing Avengers. When Spider-Man's the leader. Yeah, yeah. The Fantastic Avengers. The Incredible Avengers. <laughs> see? See? It writes itself. The Mighty Avengers. That's actually a <laughs> These thing. These are just words. Yeah. <laughs> it writes itself by being words that are... The different. Avenging Avengers. There you go. That's funny. Now you're done. Um, the Avenging I will say, Avengers of Vengeance. I will say that uh, when when we talked about the trailer a few weeks ago, uh, they I I had suggested that this movie would be Titanic length or Batman v Superman length, and I was correct. And I also said don't drink anything before the movie, which I didn't follow my own advice, and I had to pee about half an hour into the movie, and I knew I couldn't leave because I was going to miss something, and so I just I I suffered the whole the whole <laughs> movie just like trying oh, really me, hard you, to not you think and, about how much i had to pee you and me both on the on the first <laughs> time i i started like i had to pee like right when the um right when the uh the um when they killed Wait. uh ebony ma or whatever his name is what? and is that the name of the character I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the that's the name. That's the Squidward guy. Oh, but, um, okay. Yeah. So 
Just say Squidward. <laughs> so 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 when they like right before they killed him, I had to go pee. So like I we were sat smack in the middle of the row mm-hmm. and it was either I'd have to walk past all these people and like bump their legs and annoy them or hop over the back of the seat because that was the row that like there was a an aisle in between us like splitting up just like my high school girlfriend <laughs> so <laughs> yeah just climb so around I the hopped... back of the seat <laughs> So so I hopped over the seat, <laughs> ran out real fast, and went to the went to the bathroom and there was a line out the door of the bathroom and wow. I was just like fuck, I guess I'm going to deal with this and ran back into the theater and hopped back over the seat. And Sissy looks at me and she's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> He's so excited. Yeah. He's just getting riled up by from the movie. Oh, oh go, 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 go kill Squidward. <laughs> Not Squidward. No. No, <laughs> run out the door. Run out. Uh, uh, which reminds me, there was a guy at the end of the movie. As soon as Nick Fury evaporates, there was a guy that just shouted, "No, no!" And I was like, "Calm down." That, Jesus Christ. I love like, the last fine. line, mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking that of was... sissy, she just walked in and she says, "Hi, guys." Hi, Hi sissy. sissy. <laughs> we sound so excited. Uh, I like sissy. We should probably um, wrap up in a minute. It's been yeah, a long one. It's, it's, it's almost was... as long as the movie. I know. Not quite. Not quite. Yeah, yeah, but you could just um, use this as my commentary. Record, my recording's sitting at an hour 45. <laughs> um, when uh, Nick Fury's... Yeah, that was... You said, Ted, that you had your, like, oh, I hope Rocket takes his arm. I hope this uh-huh. thing... Uh, that was one of my, like, oh, I hope Nick Fury says motherfucker in this movie. And he and basically he, did. He basically so, did. Yeah. <laughs> That's the closest we're ever going to get. Uh-huh. Yeah. It was great. It was a good moment for it. Well, sweet. Maddie, thanks well, for joining us, man. Yeah. It's always good to have you. That's no problem. Thanks for having me on again. Hopefully, Hopefully this uh, time your audio yeah. works and we, he doesn't have to split it. To Yeah, yeah this will be a little bit harder to do that with. So. Got it. It's a good thing we're recording this like a week early. So, <laughs> Is, <laughs> Are there any, any special Vanishing Point episodes happening about the end of the movie where everyone vanished? Because that was the point. Um, that, was, that, was, that was the point. That's the point of it. I'm sorry. We do. We do. I give Ted. So I mean, much we have we have been working track. on we have been working we have been working on that arc of videos. Um, oh, yeah. That I've been sending you guys scripts for, and something's gonna vanish. So <laughs> yeah, mm. that's a good Teasers. little clue. Teasers. So, so that you're saying that your uh, on-screen Maddie is a character, Larry David style, like you're not actually you because you're talking about Stephen Colbert. Style. <laughs> you're refer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a good comparison. I will neither <laughs> confirm nor deny if I am me. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, whoever you are, it's been fun. <laughs> yeah. And now, please leave. Get out of here. Oh, thank you. There we go. Fine. Whew. We're back. <laughs> we're out of the. Uh, we're out of the weird dimension. The infinity we war. Pixeled yeah. away to. We yeah. we faded away into dust, in the wind. Did you? I don't. I hope that you got you caught my. That's why Maddie's gone. Joke, Maddie was. You just talked over it again. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. I'm just saying that's why Maddie's <coughs> gone now because Dennis. Oh my clicked god. his fingers and now now it's just us. That was something weird about that. Is like. Is that random? I guess we don't know anything about it, but is it randomized for the entire... Like, if the entire universe, half of the people go away, you would think that may, if it's literally, like, every other person alphabetically or something, <laughs> then that makes sense to those people in a way. But if it's the entire universe, why did anyone on Earth go away? That's such a tiny population. <laughs> How's the universe going to organize everyone alphabetically? Like, what kind of system do you do that? <laughs> no, I just mean, like... In, I don't know. Some way to order it. I don't care. Okay. Anyway. So comic relief. There we go. The funny um, the funny part of the show. Yeah, sure. So I read <laughs> I read a book. Um, you read? I, you can read. I, I read. Uh, I read I read comic books. So I read The Immortal Men number one, which is part of the DC's New Age of Heroes initiative. It's spun uh-huh. out of spun out of the metal events. And in The Immortal Men, it's basically all entirely new characters. Actually, it, like, creates an entirely new race of characters. Is Immortal Man in this? 
Um, yes, but there's also an immortal woman, and a mortal man uh -huh. may not be the immortal man that we've known in, like, DC's past. It might be. Um, he... Vandal Savage, I think, is in it, too. It's, like, essentially all the immortal characters, like, Raish Raz al Ghul, whatever yeah. you want to call him. Um, Let's just make up a third name for him at some point. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll figure it out. So, yeah, they... It should be Raz from Monsters, Inc. There you go. So that... Detective, you didn't <laughs> file your paperwork last night. <laughs> right. Yeah, the, uh, the fold-out of Immortal Men has, like, a bunch of the Immortals from the Metal Book at the top of the cover. And it looks mm. like it's it's Raish, it's uh, Vandal Savage. It is Immortal Man, who's got, like, this little, like, soul patch mustache thing going on. And Hawkman and Barbados are all in the background mm. of the cover, uh, along with the new Immortal Men team. Which includes people like their names are what it's like they have really strange names like Timber <laughs> and How is Timber spelled? Like a tree. She's okay. she's like an, It's not R E at the end? No, no. She's the one who I thought was Manito Dawn. Like she she's very much like a native looking like uh she's got like an axe tomahawk oh. sort of thing. Uh, there's the ghost fist. Uh, is apparently <laughs> the name of the guy in the black top hat and like the cloak like he looks like the shadow people like a supernatural phenomenon um yeah there's a bunch of really weird characters in here and it's so jim lee is on art and um james tinian the fourth is the writer and james, mm. he's great he did he's yeah. been doing the detective comics run with tim drake and all that um also brian benjamin is another one of the storytellers um and Jim Lee, of course, is one of DC's like publishers. He's one of the men in charge of everything. Mm -hmm. and so he, it seems like he's got a lot of free reign to to do the type of storytelling that he wants here, which is really cool. He's he's terrific. Um, these characters still like I'm I'm intrigued enough. I'm gonna check out issue two. It's it's very much like around this kind of prep school kid named Caden Park who lives in New York City, and he has these mm -hmm. nightmares and visions of all these <coughs> immortal men and this place called the campus, which is a giant pyramid that he keeps seeing in his dreams. And it's like a safe mm -hmm. place for him, and and in like in his waking life, he begins to experience his powers and be able to like kind of he can touch people and like just hold their hand and kind of see a vision of their future in a way. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really interesting so far and I'm definitely going to return for issue two. Um, another big draw is that the Batman who laughs returns here. This is like, he didn't die in the metal. He got away and he is very much still at it in this book. And it seems like he's going to be one of the main recurring villains. Yeah, you showed me a picture. That's cool. That's, I think that's something to bring people in probably. Yeah. Yeah. People who are into that character and want to, want to keep seeing him around so it's yeah he's definitely still he's gonna be meddling around with um with immortal woman and some of the other villains that were established here you saying the word vision reminded me that we didn't talk about vision at I all. i know or there. scarlet witch <laughs> I, I did really like their subplot yeah we should have brought them up they were there, they were there really was one cool. thing with scarlet witch i wanted to say i'm going to detract from this conversation <laughs> you're okay uh, she the fir the first scene that they're in um they're in like London no they're in like they're in uh, Scotland. Ireland Scotland Scotland yeah. that's it um and uh, the the I didn't like halfway through I realized she does she didn't have her weird accent like she didn't have her like oh. uh, like that's always annoyed me in the other movies because it's like a very bad mm -hmm. <laughs> accent. You didn't see that coming, did you? Or whatever. Uh -huh. Like both of them, neither of them had great accents in Age of Ultron. It's always bothered me since then. Right. But, but then now they're in Scotland and they're drinking yeah. the Scotch <laughs> Yeah, but I don't know. I didn't, <laughs> that's it really good. Man. I, but I didn't know. I didn't know if that was on purpose or if they just like forgot. Like she forgot to do it for that one scene because it's there the rest of the movie. But it's just that whole scene. Any word that would sound like that normally is just uh -huh. like a normal American accent. But anyway, yeah. that's all I want to say. That's cool. Well, I'm done talking about the Immortal Man. That was like the gist of it. Oh. So that was cool. Yeah. No, it sounds cool. Yeah, I did um, watch something I wanted to talk about that I really enjoyed. Um, Batman the Brave and the Bold and Scooby-Doo. It was a oh, really, really good yet. movie, actually. It was <laughs> hilarious. Cool. Um, yeah, so like Batman inducts Mystery Inc. into yeah. Mystery Inc. Um, 
I forget the name of it, but they had like some sort of like mystery group of heroes or something like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so it's like Batman, Detective Chimp, Martian Manhunter, The Question, Black Canary, and Plastic Man are the main detectives who are all in this group. Um, Plastic Man is not really a detective. That's usually el- the elongated man, elongated man. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how we, how we want to say it. I forget. I always say I things the wrong. First one. Who cares? Yeah, you do. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I do I do that's fine so um, but yeah Plastic Man's in it Aquaman is in it a lot and he wants to be a detective but Batman's like no Aquaman you're not a detective but like ultimately he kind of proves himself and he becomes a detective <laughs> cool. it's pretty funny Um, what is great is the uh, there's so many villains and it's like there's a lot of classic Scooby-Doo villains and there's all mm-hmm. the Batman villains you would want too like Joker and Penguin um, have like there's a really cool car chase with like the Joker mobile and the penguin has a truck and they're all chasing the the mystery ink van and the Batmobile <laughs> and it's it's pretty fun. Um and there are like 3D cars. They actually look really good, like really well animated 3D cars. Mm. Um yeah, so not like distracting JLU Japanese. Well, I mean, or... like a little <laughs> a little bit in that realm, but still like yeah. decent enough that it was it was a cool animation style. Um and then you have like uh Fred has a crush on Black Canary, and um, <laughs> Daffy's not really into it. Um, <clears throat> you've got... I'm trying to remember like what else happened. What's the, Who's like the bad guy in this? Or not, yeah. not to reveal it Scooby-Doo well, style, but I gotcha. like, what, what's the... Right. Yeah. Um, so it's the Crimson Cloak is the villain at first. And he's like just this guy who's um, basically haunting this chemical plant. So I guess Scooby-Doo type villain. Right, right. And they... they encounter him because yeah it's a very scooby-doo type villain um but they encounter him because they're looking through all the files and they're like okay so mr ink you're the new inductees into our club you get to pick the case and so they go into the file cabinet (laughs) and they basically like okay like detective chimp has five open cases black canary has like seven batman has one and so they're like okay we're gonna do batman's one open case we're gonna help him solve his one unsolved case and finally figure that out and so he, he basically it's the one innocent life that Batman could never save, and so he takes mm-hmm. him to this chemical plant where he lost. That basically someone opened a portal into another dimension, and <laughs> the scientist assistant got drawn into the portal and disappeared. And um, the guy who opened the it's portal the Krang. was crossover with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Right? So <laughs> Daphne is all about word scrambles. So whenever someone drops a name, she's like, wait. <laughs> writes down the name, jumbles up the letters. That's not a name. Uh, that's Edward Nigma or whatever. You know, that happens like that happens pretty early on, so that's not a big spoiler. Yeah. But so like the Riddler is is in it a good bit. And it what's really yeah. fun is to see the Riddler interact with the question because they're both oh, yeah. question askers. And yeah. <laughs> and so there's question mark people. Or... Yeah. And it's so Jeffrey Combs is the question again oh nice yeah yeah from jlu and so it was great to hear him back in in that yeah. role um so the scooby-doo people do they mm-hmm. is it presented as if they all just naturally exist in the same world yes or do they have some kind of weird crossover no they, they're part of the oh, okay. dc universe for <laughs> all intents of the purposes and the Brave and the Bold, which is yeah. like i mean we've seen batman crossover in in the scooby-doo universe yeah a few yeah times and i before. think i think that this version of Batman, the Brave and the Bold style, mm-hmm. allu- like let allows that to happen pretty easily. Yeah, it's not a, yeah. Like, oh, you don't need an interdimensional explanation or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we have um, Detective Chimp, who's a talking chimpanzee, yeah. and which is yeah. funny because Shaggy's like, Ugh, talking animals, weird. And Scooby's <laughs> like, I know, right? Like, that's so strange. <laughs> um, that's good. Yeah, and so what's really cool is by the end of the movie, like, no spoilers on who is revealed as what, but... Uh, right. The superheroes are basically taken off the table, and Mystery Inc. has to be. They're in the Batcave, and they're looking at Batman's like classic. It's basically like Batman Beyond. Like he's got all the costumes and mm. on display, and it's like Batman, Robin, Nightwing, Batgirl, and the everybody. yellow bat suit. Not the yellow bat suit. No. <laughs> Instead of the yellow bat suit, it's Ace the Bat Hound has a little thing oh, there. Okay. Um, and it's like all the Brave and the Bold versions of the costume. So it's like Nightwing's like set like or no, it's his nineteen eighties looking like disco. Like Flair, like he's got the yeah. whole like I don't know weird cool. thing. Yeah, the yeah. Nightwing one. Yeah. yeah, so all the mystery people have to dress up in those old costumes yeah, and go cool. save the world. Oh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I the reason I ask about the 
dimension hopping or whether there was an explanation or whatever is because the there's also been an, i watched the recent supernatural scooby-doo crossover oh, cool. um <clears throat> which i mean you don't have to know a ton about the characters on supernatural if you don't know them um to watch it uh, and still enjoy it mm -hmm. um but there's a lot more like adult humor in that because of like supernatural has a lot to do with blood and and they don't right. like swear a lot but there's a lot of like sexual references and stuff like that um so there's a lot of good moments in that where you know like like dean has a crush on on daphne like the whole time um and he's just trying to hook up with her in mm -hmm. this weird way where like it's pseudo like rapey a oh, little no. bit like but like it's not it's not enough to be weird and like a bad thing it's just like you know why do you want to hook up with a cartoon character uh -huh. and she really doesn't want to kind of a thing but then yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, fred is like trying to prove himself kind of like he's trying to uh one up dean on like manliness mm -hmm. but he does it unintentionally because he just is the manly character on the show sure, like sure. the show demands that he be always the one to be the hero and stuff so mm -hmm. anyway it was pretty fun uh, i would recommend that nice. also they kind of came out around the same time yeah yeah they did so yeah plastic kind of man hits on daphne a lot in this movie oh yeah yeah uh, <coughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i'd say definitely watch it scooby-doo and batman brave the bullet it was really fun um they there's one scene i really liked where batman is like he's in the batmobile and martian manhunter's chasing him and i i think the villains get mind controlled at some point i um mm. or not the, the villains the heroes like the other heroes i forget the context um but martian manhunter's chasing batman and he's in the batmobile and there's like a couple of buttons and it's like flamethrower martian deterrent and they're both next to each other and it's like well the flamethrower would work to deter martian manhunter <laughs> but he doesn't press that he presses martian deterrent and a box of oreos flies out the back of the Batmobile, which is like a great nod to the That's classic good. 1980s so like martian manhunter yeah. eats a lot of oreos in this version it's great that's cool yeah <clears throat> yeah they only did they only hinted at that like one time on justice league with the christmas episode yeah yeah where he's coming down the chimney yeah. it's a weird aspect of his character but it's fun yeah it's, it, yeah <laughs> Anyway, that's all that's I got. Cool. I think there was supposed to be like a, a, epi or a issue of either Justice League Adventures or Justice League Unlimited, the comic, where that it, like it was written but never drawn or something. It, where like he it was an episode um, by J M. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah. was a very Justice League International inspired story that had like yeah. Fire Ice Booster, Blue Beetle. Maybe it was even in it. I don't yeah, know, I think uh, so. Martian they were Man gonna Hunter they were like Flash. fighting over Martian Manhunter's Oreos or something. <laughs> it, was something weird. Weird. it was probably yeah. a good thing I think they made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for enduring this two and a half hour. Uh, Thing. Hopefully, <laughs> I don't hopefully know you listened to it while you were in the theater watching <laughs> Infinity War. Yeah, that's so, the best way to do it. You should be finishing no, your popcorn uh, now. You can go. If you're Chris Hastings, you're listening to it at the gym or when you're chilling at home. Nice. So that's that's the best probably I, I listen, times. I listen to us in the car when I'm driving. <laughs> oh. <laughs> to make sure I didn't say anything horrible. Hi, future Ted in his <laughs> car. Uh I, I listen to us when I'm editing it, uh, and then I never listen to it again unless I have to do my homework for an Avengers-related podcast like we did today. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to skip any... We didn't really get any messages anyway, but we'll skip the mail yeah. stuff. My so main thing does. is, like, I'm trying to protect my future political career, you know, so I don't right. want to be like, yeah. cry by the pussy in a podcast you know <laughs> no you just did though oh, you got fuck. a sound bite now damn it <laughs> but, no, it, but no, I, I think they're more likely voice. i said it in a deep they're voice more, <laughs> they're more likely to be like okay uh mrs clinton this really important political question and now uh not same question for you mr kendrick uh, how do you pronounce phantasm phantasm <laughs> and, then you're, and then you're like oh no what do i say <laughs> all right i'm sorry anyway uh, thank you for listening, everybody. <laughs> uh, we're out every other Monday uh, here on the YouTube channel. We're also on iTunes. There's a link in the description. Um, if you're listening for the first time or if you're a veteran listener, thank you very much. I would, I would, we would all appreciate uh, you sharing this with anyone you think would like it because, you know, this is the lowest viewed thing on the channel. <laughs> and we should probably have more views. But we do appreciate our steady audience, and uh, and you know if you want to, if you're like, hey, there's this guy, 
um, he says words wrong. Um, you should listen to the podcast. It's great. That's yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, uh, thanks again. Dor- Dormammu would want you to listen to the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Dormammu. Dormammu. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks again to Adam Mullen. He writes all our music. Uh, you'll hear it at the start in, uh, of every podcast and every video. Um, he's at musica-atomica.com. Uh, and we're on social media at DCAU Watchtower. You can also email us at info at watchtowerdatabase.com if you want to suggest topics for episodes or if you want to be like, hey, talk about this like Chris did today. Uh, video schedule. We have videos out on the YouTube channel. Today is the Monday video. There will be another one tomorrow. It's Trivia Tuesdays. With me. Uh, the next, yeah, with Ted. With, with, with me. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's you. This time, this last time. episode, we weren't so sure yeah. who it was. Um, and then, uh, then the next, then next week, we'll have a video on Sunday and Thursday, and that just rotates indefinitely. Um, so subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any of that, and you can click the little bell thing, I guess, to so you get your phone buzzes whenever we put a video up because that's more likely you'll see it. Uh, patreoncom slash Entertainment. You can donate to our grand cause of making these videos so we can make them faster and better and quit our jobs more and stuff uh <laughs> and that's that's it i guess the end the end uh, did ted give us a final sl- oh oh no i'm trying to snap is it working yeah is half yeah, the universe okay. gone is half uh, the episode over <laughs> half of the episode is gone i'll just edit out half the episode All right. you should do one final snap to to snap us out. It's the end game.